Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessa, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy Saturday, Saturday, April 13th, 2024, as we start this show in a little bit different of a thing, because if you haven't been paying attention to what's been going on here, down to the minute. Yes, there is something going on, something that's been... You know, kind of, we've been waiting to see something's going to be going on. What are we talking about? Let's jump right into the newsroom and bring up the news if anybody hasn't heard about this one yet. Yes, it's an interesting one to say the absolute least. Yes, swarms of Iranian drones are headed towards Israel. The attack could take anywhere from one to two hours before it arrives. Cameras are pinned in the skies over Israel to see. Apparently, they're not. Iran isn't launching any of their ballistic missiles yet, but there supposedly is a swarm of drones that is on its way towards Israel at this point in time. Well, they may have it coming, considering their new parking lot they're trying to install also, that used to be called the Gaza Strip and the war crimes they've been committing. So you never know where it's going to go because even that, uh, right before John, this happened... Trey, I know these are uh, all... There was also a, I believe, over somewhere over there. Yes, and a, and a breaking alert. Let me go ahead and bring this one up. Right before the drone swarm was brought out, yes, Jordan actually shut down all of their airspace as well. Let me go ahead and bring this up for us to check it out. Yeah, it's an interesting day to say the absolute least. Yes, we have do have UFOs to talk about. Heck, there was even something that looked like a triangular UFO that was over Israel in the middle of a swarm of, of uh, rocket fire that was coming across. It was getting shot down. It's interesting to say the least. On that note, before we get going, I want to go ahead and welcome in our audience. Yes, I know we're covering stuff that's not necessarily UFOs, but remember, in the old days, for the people who were around, we used to be called UAP Disclosure Tonight, but when the tr atrocities happened in the evacuation of Afghanistan, I'm sure everyone remembers that one. I took out the name UAP from Disclosure Tonight. Just call ourselves Disclosure Tonight for a good reason. Because when things are going on in the world, it affects all of us. We're going to go ahead and come together as a community and talk about it and have a good time. On that note, I want to go ahead and welcome in our audience. Let's see who the heck we have out there. If I can look at bring up the list of participants. I get There were like 50 people out there. Let's see how many we have out there now. On that note, let me go ahead and strike up the drums. And welcome in our audience. Who the heck do we have out there for this Saturday edition of Disclosure Tonight? Yes, we're on two, three days a week, Monday, Friday, and Saturday. We couldn't cut out Saturday show for our friends in the UK. So on that note, let's go ahead and welcome everybody in. Aubrey McLeod is here along with Kat, Chameleon UK. Charles Kerr, the Charles Kerr is here. How about that? We've got Constantine Dante, Eli McGinnis, Fox Moldering, Jamie B., would you look at that? Jay Katz here, Jim Flory, and Kathy Kelly Bro with those piercing blue eyes. You need to come in the back sometime, at least before or after the show. Kelly would love to hear that voice of yours that we just get to imagine in these points. Let's see who else we have out there. We've got King Bull, Laura Campbell. Lindsay's here along with Little Niles Guy on the rocks and in the soil, also known as Michael Godbold. Good to see you, Michael. Paul DeMond is here as usual. Call him present. Peggy with Crockett and Tubbs. What about Steve? But she's joining us from the great state of Florida. How about that? We got uh, Robert Anthony's here along with Yell Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. But wait, wait a minute. We almost forgot about Shelly. I'm not sure who blocked her, but I would think that one was probably a mistake on that note. Let's go ahead really quickly and get to the... No, 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 no. We're going to go ahead. Yeah, I know I'm talking too much, but that's what we're here for. It's that time of the night to go ahead and welcome in our panel and see who we have in the back. Well, it looks like we got T up there, but I think we've got Andy coming in from the UK. How's it going, Andy? Hey, Thomas. Yeah, it's going really well today. Yeah. Still not recovered from last week's work, but yeah, it's really good to be back for the wonderful Saturday show. Yeah. And thank you for keeping it for us uh, UK and European residents. Yeah. Need to get your liver Great checked. You're looking a little bit jaundiced today, Andy. I know. I, I, I don't know. It used to look really well, and it's just gone really yellow. I, I honestly don't know why. Oh, don't worry about him. I'm just having fun, my friend. I'll also in the back, the we've got a man coming from the country where all the users are silent. It's been too long since I've said that. Let's welcome in our dear Michael Sokoloff. How's it going, Michael? All the way from Canada. 
<laughs> it's going good, Thomas. How are you? Surpri- you know, I have to ask the question. The price of pet of gasoline has gone up 23% recently. They're starting to hit you on your electric bills and your gas bills if you have it. But We're have at they- about $1.46 Canadian. Yeah, and the question is, have they started hitting you and started giving you an increase on your internet costs these days as well? No, no, not yet. Not yet, but we do have faith. Trudeau will find a way to tax you on that more. (laughs) (laughs) You know. (laughs) Another another interesting fact about Canada, did you know that over 50% of all men in the trades, that's carpentry, that's plumbing and everything, like yourself, you're a locksmith, are over 55 years old, and they're set to retire within the next five years or so, which is going to leave a huge opening for all those people we have down here in America. We can send up to Canada to help you build. (laughs) Well, they're still looking for a replacement for for my job. Yeah. Well, if you're going to go back. Nobody wants to work anymore. if, If they call you back, charge them twice the rate. Yeah. You are in a position of power, my friend. Just want to help. All right. Thank you for coming in. Also coming in from a man from the down south, at least from here, Washington State, from the state of Borgen. But it's not Borgen anymore because it's not boring because Neil Carr is there. Welcome, Neil. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good today, Thomas. Good afternoon. How are you? Nice new plaid hat and plaid shirt. And then I cl- I'm clashing. I know. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Don't change a thing, I tell you. All right, who else we have in the back here? We've got a man whose heart we go out for. Mr. Reality Check, how you doing, Harold? How's that new exercise program treating you? Uh, Things are going pretty good here, man. I'm hunkered down in the basement of the White House, man. I've got (laughs) got all my guys outside with their bazookas and stuff ready to shoot down some scramjets. Best intro ever, Reality Check. He even got the thing centered so it showed up right. Man, you are on the ball today. Well, since she's falling over Yay. laughing, since she's falling over laughing, having a good time, we've got Ms. Tia Loreno from the great state of New York. Welcome, Tia. Hello, guys. Happy Saturday. I hope everyone's doing great um, and being safe. How about yeah. that? Yeah, I think we we're all safe paid. for the time being. We'll be talking about some other stuff shortly. Who else we Take have in the heads. back? Well, 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 he was here. He was gone, but we'll get back to that in a second. We we went right past you. Let's go ahead and welcome in our dear Shelly Montgomery. Shelly, how are oh, you doing, Thomas, my lady? It's a beautiful Saturday. Oh, Hello, it's just a beautiful guys. Saturday here, too. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. 56 Saturday. degrees and sunny. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Sorry. <laughs> That, that's just the character. That's not me to tell you the truth. This is me. There's no gas leak around here somewhere, I tell you. But thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> but we had Mike, Mike, Mike disclosure here. He was like, are we going to cover this stuff about what's going on in Israel? And I'm like, yeah, we'll be talking about it, Mike. You want to talk about it? Oh, yeah, definitely. But we lost him. <laughs> All right, let's get out of this and let's get into the news of the day. Well, yes, there have been a lot of sightings of UFOs all over the place. Some of them remind us of the days back in Hawaii that actually introduced me and Ted Rowe a while ago when he covered this. On that note, let's go ahead and get to the top story of the day, or one of the top stories of the day. Well, we can get to it before we get to that one. We we do have one delay we have to get to. Not sure if anyone has seen Matt Laszlo. Uh, you know, the reporter from Ask a Poll, we cover all of his things on a regular basis. He had a phenomenal post up on Twitter. He was on a Twitter space. He's on a couple of YouTube channels, just not with us, but that's okay. But he had a wonderful picture of himself in his garden that I need to go ahead and share with all of you because it is on Twitter. Why not? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let me bring it up. What are we talking about? He looks so happy and proud in his garden. But my comment to Matt on this one was Matt. Because if you take a look closely behind Matt, he's in his garden so proud. Matt, got to ask the question. Are your tomato plants sativa or indica? What do you think in the chat? Let us know. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) It's not good to broadcast to the world that you have these things sitting in your backyard in a planter. But apparently that's okay. Neil, go ahead. What do you think? Is it sativa or indica? 
that's that's definitely looking uh, indi indicate in indicative of um, a pothead, but um, especially when he talks to Congress. And, but he uh, does like bring out day. his mason jars full of buds. We've seen that before when he's been on our show in the past. Yeah, um, that's bold. For yeah, sure. it's very bold. But you know that and he also had a picture from the shroomery or whatever it was of hey, if someone lost. They're mushrooms. Look what I found. <laughs> nice. Doesn't he? Doesn't he look like the villain from um, from uh, Fifth Element? Though. Yeah, we just see the red dot with the bleeding coming right down. And yes, right. You see that? <laughs> there have been people who have said he kind of looks like Adolf, but I'm not going to repeat that here. But yeah, that's all right. Also, with their hand up in the back, Harold. What say you? Well, at least I see one tomato in the background, so that's kind of encouraging, right? I think it's plastic. Whatever ah, it is, okay, it, that ain't real. Maybe it is. I oh, yeah, know. I see a crease in it from where they molded yeah. it. Yeah. There's one seam, there's another seam, there's another seam, but it does look good. Eye. Yeah, 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 I kind of have fun with it. I do have it big on a 31 inch screen right in front of me, so I appreciate you sharing that. Michael Sokloff, your hand is up, my friend. Yeah, he uh, he was mentioning his plants on the Good Trouble show just uh, an hour ago. Nice. Uh, and he we mentioned that he can grow them legal. So why are there you know so many people in jail for the same thing in another state? Because he doesn't even live in a state. He lives in Washington D.C., the yeah. District of Columbia, and it is legal there. So are mushrooms, for that matter, just like it is. In Oregon, where Neil lives, isn't it legal by you as well, Neil? And that it is. Yeah, we've uh, we've okayed pot, and we've also um, approved uh, research done on uh, mushrooms, magic yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, how about that? And pretty much, if you have anything in your mushroom. pockets, they're not going to arrest you these days in uh, Oregon. Yeah, they're anymore. gonna they're gonna um, kind it? of. Uh, revamp they're gonna redo that one a little bit because it's a little off the hook i mean police are handcuffed <laughs> from doing anything if they walk up to your car and you got you can have all kinds of drug paraphernalia out they won't do anything but they're gonna try to yeah. clean that up and uh at least make it a misdemeanor again you know but even if it's a misdemeanor the prosecutor in oregon even for people who are protesting and burning you know burning dumpsters getting out there being uh well like the people in portland like they used to be i miss watching um polyfrog 64 and his live streams oh, of yes i miss I <laughs> there was actually he had there was a cop there he called robo pig <laughs> you don't want to screw with this guy because he will freaking not. We uh, we we actually have robo pigs out on patrol now. We oh really? Little, little robots downtown. Yeah. yeah. Walking around. Yeah. Rolling around. Yeah. Now yesterday face. I did run out of sticks. Granted it's reversed because my camera's reversed so I can point in the right direction. But I did bring out I did get more treats for the doggies so they can come and come here, Mocha. Come come and You're reaching out. into my head. There we go. <laughs> Here, Mocha, come on. Come get the Neil cookie. There you go. Good girl. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hello. There you go. Anyway, wonderful day. Wonderful day. All right. So let's get on to this. Yes, we know about things going on. Yes, Andy, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to say it was an amazing magic trick pulling a, a, a doggy treat from behind Neil's ear. <laughs> <laughs> just reach in and pull <laughs> what other things can we find in there neil nothing go figure <laughs> yeah and uh, just let me know when you find a rabbit i will i definitely will for that matter here you want a neil cookie i lost right. the keys to my car man are they in there i don't know i don't have any keys to my car here otherwise i'd go and pull them out but hey, what else can I find in there? Hey Neil, are you there? I think I'm, I think yeah. I may have I think I may have found our wrench. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my wrench? What is it doing in your port? Oh my gosh. Oh man, it's funny. Yeah, I never thought we'd be getting to here, but you know what? We're having a good time. It's Saturday. Got to have a good one. Well, let's turn the clock back a couple of years. If you remember a while ago, there was a problem. We're probably going back three years here, if not more. Um, there was an initial 
UFO that was seen over Hawaii that actually got Ted Rowe to get in contact with me a long time ago. Let me go ahead and bring up this video, share it with everybody, and let's go ahead and reflect on this because we've got videos of a suspicious UFO that I think may be a drone or something because it doesn't look exactly right, but we'll go through it. Let's look at this old video from a couple of years ago about a interesting blue UFO that was actually seen over... Um, Hawaii, the big island. Let me jump into the desktop video. Oh, is it over there? Let's take it over. How, how about that? There we go. Let's play this up. Let's go ahead and bring it up a little bit larger. Uh, that's good enough. And let's go ahead and play this. Here we go, everybody. Officials from the Federal Aviation Administration say there were no aircraft incidents or accidents in this area Tuesday night, but multiple witnesses report seeing a large blue object fall out of the sky and into the ocean. Something is in the sky. What is that? This video was taken by Misitina Sape at 826 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. What do we look at? And then I was like, oh, started calling my husband then because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, come look up there. See if you see what I see. They all said, yeah. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue object had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. Tia, you have your hand up, my dear lady. Hey, I have the video of that going into, I don't know if it is I the have ocean. that too. I'm just showing the initial one from Hawaii a couple of years ago for reference before we get oh. to the ones that was going off on the uh, the Delaware, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry about okay. that. Here we go. Let's continue this video. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. Oh, the f***ing line in the water, whatever it is. She described it as being larger than a telephone pole <laughs> and says she never heard it make any sound. We called 911 for have, like, one cop or somebody for come out and, um, come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband would look up and he seen the white one coming. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area, but had no aircraft disappear off radars and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. Wow, that's like a UFO bar. Although Mariah's had a couple days to think about it, she says she's still baffled by what she saw. To this day, I don't know. If you guys can find out what it was, I'll let you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. There you go. So this takes us back a number of years now. Officials reason, from the federal... The reason we're going ahead and bringing this up, because over the East Coast, there was another uh, craft that was seen, looks similar to this, but definitely different from what you had just seen. So this is something where you can see where there's numerous LEDs going along. It almost looks like a piece of intestine, the way it's kind of going, or a balloon to that degree. Let's go ahead and play this first clip of this object that's up in the sky that was seen. Oh, was, was this over New York, Tia? One was over New York, and then the other two were over Delaware. Over Delaware. There we go. Let's go ahead and play this little so, clip here of this. There we've got the craft kind of whatever it is. With leads moving up and down, I would say, on this object. It definitely looks interesting. It doesn't look like your, your, your usual UFO that you would normally see. Unfortunately, this clip that was shared is only 14 seconds long. But wait, there's more. There's another clip that's out there of the craft supposedly coming down in the water now let's go ahead and take a look at this one as we're going to see it's going to go down it doesn't go completely under the water like we what like what happened in hawaii it kind of goes down but then kind of comes back up again 
So let's go ahead and take the audio down on this one just in case of copyright. Let's go ahead and watch this. And here we see it's kind of slowly going down. You can see the reflection going on the water. Harold, do you have your hand up on this one? Yeah, I just wonder if uh, NHI are going fishing there with the fluorescent worm. I know, that's what it kind of looks like. So you see the thing kind of go down. You can kind of see around it as we're looking at the object itself as it goes down into the water, and it doesn't go completely down. Here's the thing that's interesting. Check this out. You can see that the object itself is there with a kind of wrapping around, so it almost looks like when the object was going down into the water, it was coiling up, and as it's coming back out, it's uncoiling and becoming a bit more erect. Actually, it kind of looks like it's wiggling a little bit on the end there, doesn't it? It does. As it goes back up into the air, come on, get your Samsung phone to focus. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely swinging. That bottom third of it's swinging back and forth. Yeah. It's going back into the water again. Not sure what it's finding. You know, I would almost have to say if this was something that was going on, I would have to say that the person who's actually recording this could, po if this was a drone, could possibly be the drone operator. But it's not going completely under the water. It goes down, it goes back up, it goes down, it goes back up. So what would be the point of it acting in that particular manner? Here it goes, lifting out of the water again. Real or fake? Reminds me of the birds that used remember the birds that used to tip into the, the glass of water and then bob up and down and stuff. Do you see the other light, Thomas? Which other light? There's an <clears throat> there's a white light that once it goes under, see it? See it right there? It's a coming up from under the water when that goes down. See it? And it gets brighter this here? as that's nope. a, that's a reflection, Tia. No, yeah, I know, but this right here is a white light. That right here, which is way away from the object itself. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's but, a whole but, different but. entity, whatever it is. No, no. Take a look at this. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that the person is recording this with the light on their phone on, so you're getting illumination going on the shore. Probably what you're seeing on here, that white light, is probably coming as an illumination of the objects that are at the bottom of the scene that you can see are clearly illuminated. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that because most people wouldn't even think of that because I didn't. Well, you can see, let me go ahead and just bring it down a little bit more. You can see at the bottom of the object itself, I mean the bottom of the screen, that you've got the... This area down in here that's illuminated, and potentially what we're seeing here is a small LED coming from their phone that's illuminating what we're looking at. Because as you could see, things that are in the far distance up in here, how they're cascading down. So just like the, the object that's here, you're seeing a cascading down. So this is something that's at a different distance and probably the phone. Andy, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, it doesn't look at it, you know. It, I guess it's going into a lake, but it doesn't look as though it's very far from the camera. Um, no, it doesn't. So I think it, this is part of the Delaware <laughs> River, for that matter. Okay. you got a, um, a tree off to the, the left on the screen there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's looking as though it's not particularly that far from, from land as well. I'm 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 saying this is an... Yeah, I, I, I don't believe this is anything... Um, yeah. And, you know, um, I was going to say nefarious, but no, I'll, I'll say you know, it could be something nefarious being that it's set up. But the way it's coming down, I saw, I think it was um, somebody said about it being like LED lights on like a fishing line. Yeah, you know, where, where it's waving, it seems to be you know, something that's actually being dangled on a, on a line. Can I say something real quick, though? Go on, Tia. Okay, <clears throat> this was You're recorded over the highway, back. and it was... Um, 
and way up to it was definitely not a fishing line. Okay, I um, because it was That's it was good. flat, That's it was good. way up, back. and it was up way up into the clouds, and it was coming down, and it was lines. flying all over, and it wasn't. It had control of its body, like it wasn't flying in the wind, like you would like on fishing line and then it dropped there and then it comes out of there and it goes back up again and it goes into a different part. That kid just happened to be there to videotape it. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm only going by the little bit I'm seeing here. So yeah. See it. You see it, how it's, it's got complete control. Over no, but what we're seeing as it's coming down, it's kind of wiggling yeah. as it's coming down. And as it drops down, the wiggling kind of goes off to the side, goes down to it. But the thing is, the thing never goes underwater. So we can't call this a transmedium craft as much as we'd like to because it's coming down, going down to the surface, and then going back up again. So it's, you know, we're going to have to wait for see more information of what it is. But either way, this thing is relatively small. It's not of a, of a substantial size, and it's very interesting. Michael, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, it looks like it's going into the water partially. Yes. And and but what I'm wondering, I wonder if it is it cooling off? Is it refueling? What's it doing? We don't you know. know. We don't know. All we can do is observe and speculate. Yeah. Bingo, and that's it. And hopefully more information will come out this one on this one for the near uh, in the near future. Now there's an inter another interesting video that predates some of the stuff that was going on with regards to uh, the incidents that are happening over Israel right now. Mike, this is something that I was looking at that you also tagged. You called me about. We talked about this one earlier today. This is oh, we did. This is a video of something that's going over Israel. You can see we've got a bunch of lights. We have some explosions that are going on in the different area, like you'd be having from a uh, a um, a system, uh, like a Patriot system, to go ahead and take it down. But this is an object that's flying along. Let me go ahead and zoom this in. And as it's flying along, we get a. There's a bunch of lights that are there, but then as it's moving. Let me move this up out of the way. There it goes down to something that looks like a traditional, if you want to call it, V-shaped craft like we've seen before in the past. Now, you know, we're seeing not these objects that are getting blown off further to the left side of the screen as it's moving along. We can say whether or not these particular objects that we're seeing blowing up are part of this actual craft, but it's one of those typical craft that we're seeing in multiple directions. Now, at the end of the video, it's interesting. We'll see the craft go down to just one potential light. Mike, what was your thought on this that uh, piqued your interest? Uh, it more than piqued my interest because, number one, it's coming from a film crew from Al Jazeera, which is a credible mainstream news media outlet overseas. And they accidentally caught this footage while they were fil filming these uh, missile strikes going against Israel. And this obvious triangle craft, this looks legitimate to me. It, I, the, the shape of the craft, the missile strike is legitimate. Um, that's why I called you, because I wanted you to take a good look at this video and analyze it and let me know what you thought, because it looked pretty damn good to me. Still does. Yeah. It's a short, you know, clip, 18 seconds long. It would be great if we could get video that goes before this and after to kind of figure out what it is. But it's something that's interesting, to say the least, considering what is now taking place in the skies over Israel tonight. Yes, exactly. Uh, territory, which they've never done before. Sorry about that, because we, as we are, as we've all heard today, that there is a drone attack that's going out uh, that has been launched by Iran to go ahead and go towards the country of Israel. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than that since we talked before the show began. Um, it do you want to fill us that, in? Do you want to fill us yeah. in on that? Because I, I've heard from Tia. Tia, didn't you have one of your relatives get called up for duty, although they're not active? Yeah, they they were. Um, they actually were served. Who was today they? Was it your brother? Was it your friend? Who? What happened? My brother. Yeah. Yep. yep. And we 
don't live far from a military base. Um, and I remember, I think I told you about three weeks ago that for some reason, the, my, the base was like, start, was getting ready. We had tons of, you know, Blackhawks, uh, the big, you know, things that don't have wheels that were on the highway. There was probably like, I don't know, I'd say 25 of them. So we noticed around here and then, um, yeah, my brother, they, they served them at his house hand to hand and he has to go report Thursday. So, and he's really? not active duty. So, you know, they can call people back up that have special education on certain things, especially weapons. So he's got to go. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah. He is now active duty. Yeah. Interesting. And it's scary when they do that. So, you know, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but you know, no, especially... but there's also been a lot of activity going over the Air Force bases on the eastern coast of the United States. So something is definitely up. Something has changed. That's where I'm at. And it probably really relates to what we've got going on here, where Iran is launching drone attacks on Israel. Right. So uh, apparently yeah. we may have had insight from our government to understand what's coming people's way. And it sounds like if they're they're calling people up, that sounds like something that's more than nothing for that matter. Absolutely. And I also want to say there's been a lot more UAP sightings and videos that are out there right now. And I really believe that they're, it's because of this. So Interesting. it's just my opinion. And it's yeah. a lot like Michigan Lake, um, a lot of them. And, you know, Michigan Lake is so big. It's Lake like Michigan, yeah. So, yeah, just pay attention, guys, to the sky. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Um, and you never know what's going to be going on, Mike. Anything from you? Yeah, I, yeah. Um, initially, this started out with drone strikes against um, Israel. But a UAV that's launched from Iran and has to travel over land to Israel takes about nine hours. Yeah. That's the traveling time. But since then, what's happened is uh, the drones, which are obviously not really a threat, um, were just m mostly a distraction because Iran is now targeting uh, multiple points in Israel with uh, cruise missiles. And this is now escalating to beyond a simple tit-for-tat strike yeah. back against uh, Israel. As well, a result of that... If I want to go I, ahead and bring this up, Israeli government's doomsday plane, which may be where they've taken and put their leadership, including Netanyahu, took off 53 minutes ago and is getting the hell out of Israel. So they're basically saying, you know what? They may be coming from our leadership like what we did to go ahead and take out, what Israel did to take out leadership of the uh, Iran military. It's yeah, well, it, yeah, it, it's getting further than that, because now what's happened is the leader of Iran has basically declared war and stated that uh, this is a military strike. It's called Promise Kept, and they're launching multiple cruise missiles and drones and a KC-135 U.S. military refueling plane just declared emergency over Iraq, so it must have been targeted. And now President Biden said that he's going to be addressing the nation this afternoon. And uh, I have a feeling that we're now going to be dragged into a full-blown war in the Middle East involving oh, the United States. Bitch. That's the yep. last. That's the last thing we need. But it's something that could be going on if Biden's going to be addressing the country. Uh, apparently they've written the script for the old man to come forward and talk about something that they've known about for some time. Well, if you remember when He's there they were as talking well, about um, in Syria. In sorry about that. Hold on. Here we go. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, if you remember when they were going after Trump for stealing all of the classified documents and having the war plans against Iran from the United States, this is something that's already been drawn up and on the map. We have it on, on ready to go. So it seems like now that U.S. military has been dragged into this by Iran, the U.S. is going to be involved in Iran's full strike against uh, Israel. Now Syria launched strikes against Israel 
which means many, many countries are getting involved in this that support Iran. And we're going to get dragged into it because we support Israel. So it, it seems to be shaping up to a, a full-blown war, a new one. Again, I certainly hope not. I certainly yeah. that's the last thing we need as we continue to send billions and billions of dollars overseas. And as uh, the citizens of our country are, are gripped by the addiction that goes on and the people living on the streets. It's just a sad situation of, you know, worrying about what's going on in other countries. More importantly, when there's an opportunity to try and protect our country from invaders like what's going on down in Mexico, and we turn a blind eye to it. That's the problem, Mike. We're letting in those who could be tacking us from within into our own country, and that is just... It's not a good situation, is it? No, because while we're talking about this, it seems like by the minute, it seems to be escalating. Uh, Iran is now getting ready to launch medium range ballistic missiles against israel and iran announced that any country that supports israel and allows their airspace to be used will be dragged into this conflict and will be attacked so it's escalating so So if we help israel if we help israel that basically opens us up to attack at this point from iran correct it was announced by the uh, the leader of Iran, the military uh, leader, was oh boy, it Khomeini? Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. So well, anybody. At least, hey, at least that gives us a lot of news to go ahead and cover, Mike. <laughs> oh, it'll keep us busy for a long time to come. Yeah. This is this is just starting. It hasn't even officially begun yet. Wait till Biden does his uh, addressing the It may the also nation. actually be an open. Yeah, sorry about that, Mike. Yeah, it's just one of those things we're going to have to cover it as we can now. Uh, Jumping back to science news, if we can, let's go ahead and jump in. And Tia Lorraine's coming. Is that a real Tia Lorraine? Uh, Tia, you have your hand up, my dear lady. Yes, sir, I did. Um, Hold on, someone's got their mic on. Go ahead. Tia, um, go ahead. So I want to say this, too, that they have been threatening a nuclear war and um so israel they also have nuclear bombs and if it's a mutual destruction israel will go out in a blaze so i really really hope that we can get this calmed down because they're not gonna just you know if they strike and they use a nuclear warhead on Israel. Israel will return fire the same way. And I cannot believe this has been allowed to happen in 2024, Mm. Thomas. I know. With the education that we have now and the the knowledge that we have from all of these wars, it's so sad. And and I want to say Australia, um, they've had lone wolf terrorists Popping people up, you know, somebody just went after a nine month old baby today in Australia. Yeah. So I just, people need to just be, uh, be very, very aware of your surroundings and just be careful. And if you are able to be armed legally, be armed. Again, not necessary in the continental United States to you. We're not being invaded. Here, no, no, I didn't say we were invaded, but we do have, they, we did just have something in Ohio. They did just uh, find somebody, the FBI did, the day before the eclipse that we're ready to blow up some uh, churches here. So we do have them here. Yeah, we and, also have law enforcement here. That's well equipped. Yes, we do. With. But our law enforcement really isn't the greatest anymore. But there's not cops like you out on the street anymore, Mike. Oh, thank you for saying that to you. I appreciate it. Andy, you have your hand up. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, I'm just going to be a bit of a voice of reason here for a minute. Um, now, Australia, um, the individual that um, partook of this this heinous act was known to the police. Um, as far as I'm aware, it was not terrorist related. Um, I don't, you know, the, the the news hasn't come over here exactly what the cause was. Um, I I 
I'm betting on, unfortunately, it was somebody with uh, with mental health issues. Or, or Listen, we cannot use mental. When you go after, he he was Tia, screaming, Tia. Who's screaming Tia. Tia. Uh, Bible right. stuff. And when you go after a baby and women, you that's not mental illness, okay? That is just homicidal. No, but no that can be mental illness, Tia. It can be mental illness. Okay. Yeah. If, so, if, if the individual was suffering something like schizophrenia, some some issue like that, you know, not all schizophrenic people have are ever going to do anything like this. Unfortunately, some are capable of it. You know, I understand, we, but I think we, that we I, I do think we, that I think, a lot. Yeah, yeah, and we right. need to be careful because not everybody that screams mental illness. It, it, listen, if you if they're able to live normal lives and stuff like that outside of it, and then they decide you know they're they're foreigners for one and then yeah. they've been using hate speech and and you know stuff like that i didn't say terrorists loosely i said it because can, can I just yeah if we can let's go ahead and deflect really quick peter panda i know Thank you've you. got a very strong view on this welcome my friend appreciate you coming in the back today oh uh, yeah hello thomas how you doing good to see you my good friend, you, my friend. Uh, yeah I you know, uh, Mike's right. I, you know, what, what he said is correct. Uh, we've had plans to attack Israel for decades. Uh, John Bolton is, is one, or uh, not Israel, but Iran. John Bolton is yeah. one of them. Uh, and there's been a movement uh, to do that for literally decades. So this is not, this is not new. We're getting drawn into a war that does not have our own best interest in mind at all. We get nothing out of this. Uh, we're trying to clear the neighborhood for another country uh, so that they can do activities they want to do without uh, getting any retaliation. And we're once again, uh, like you said, sending billions and billions and tens of billions of dollars overseas uh, to fund these operations. And the ones that are getting paid off are the military industrial complex. That's who always wins. It doesn't matter whether the country wins or loses. If the bombs go boom, they make money. And these are the same people we need to be watching for this the UFO cover up. Uh, and uh, we we can also say I think that video that Mike shared from Al Jazeera was a very interesting one uh, because it does kind of look to me like there might be a now any three points will make a triangle, right? We got to say that, so yeah. we have to admit that. But they don't all make an equilateral triangle, and yeah. that was kind of an interesting thing. So it did look like an equilateral triangle to me. And it did kind of look like maybe uh, after these explosions from probably the Iron Dome interceptors, which the U.S. pays for, Raytheon pays for, and Lloyd Austin, who is the commercial salesperson no, for Raytheon. No, let's be honest. Also is our... Ray Raytheon doesn't pay for it. Raytheon makes money off of. Oh, well, we pay for it, but Raytheon makes it and sells it. Oh, God, it. yeah. To, so, to hey, Israel. if there's something and... going on, it looks like there's a good opportunity to invest in Raytheon these days. Just watch your, uh, but we have to take a look at Nancy Pelosi's investments. If she's been uh, putting her money in Raytheon, it seems like it's a good investment. Oh, she's another one. Absolute insider trading all the way through. Uh, and a, a lot of these people are. But the, if you remember, they had to do a special waiver to appoint uh, Lloyd Austin, or as I call him, where's Waldo, to the uh, the head of the Pentagon, because he was serving for a military contractor and also in the military uh, too recently. So there was there's a, supposed to be a separation there where you're not supposed to go from the military directly into the Pentagon and also the weapons manufacturing. So this all looks like a whole bunch of money laundering uh, to me. But the question is, does the U.S. have some secret craft uh, over the area that's doing surveillance or reconnaissance or uh was that a you know a non-human uh craft and object up there because it definitely looked like it was staying put and it definitely looked like it was loitering and uh, you know it wasn't triggering the iron dome yeah. itself so uh either uh israel the idf knew about it and it was showing up on radar and they knew not to fire on it and it was coordinated with the u.s and it's a u.s platform or it's a non-human 
uh, object up there. And I think that because was a, a non-human too. object could be going ahead and recognizing where this could be escalating to, and they're trying to stop it from going on. Now, along those lines, really quick, I do have a video. I'm going to say it's purported. It's not actually verified, but someone's posting a video up there, which may or may not be true. And I'm going to say this because if I say it's real and it's not, YouTube is going to kill this video from us saying Iranian cruise missiles flying over Basra and I in Iraq on their way to Israel. Let me go ahead and bring this video up and go ahead and show it. There we go. That's accurate, so, Thomas. That video is accurate. Well, we think it's accurate, but we don't have 100% certainty. If we say it's accurate, this video could be deleted by YouTube because that's just how way YouTube works. So we're saying, yes, it's interested. This video was just posted not more than 10 minutes ago, as you can see, but we're trying to bring you the latest news as, as, as it's happening. Uh, Tia, you have your hand up, my dear lady. Um. I want to say too <clears throat> to everybody that I I don't have a stake in this, you know I I support all of the innocent people that um are from every country that are drawn in this too. I just want everybody um to know that I love them and I am not in any way condoning anything. I think that our uh, people that are in charge are murderers, um not the people. Yes. Absolutely. That's what it's about, my dear lady. Now, there I do have another video. Let me go ahead and bring this one up. This one is purportedly showing that a translated post uh, saying that urgent Hezbollah is currently bombing Israel, Israel, Israeli military settlements uh, while Iran bombs Israeli airspace with 400 drones as missiles. So, yeah, as you can see, those missiles are coming across, but every one that's going across is getting destroyed. Peter, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind here what what they're actually dealing with, right? Uh, so, you know, Iran does have some, you should show that clip, Iran does have some extremely advanced weapons and weaponry, and some of it is probably a little bit more advanced than the U.S. for some of their platforms, or at least they have platforms the U.S. doesn't have. Now, like there was a Hermes uh, drone that Israel flies, it's a killer drone, uh, that uh, Albit Systems uh, in the UK, who's an Israeli weapons manufacturer, makes the engines for. Uh, it's a very high-flying drone. And yeah. this was taken out uh, by uh, probably by Iran, Iranian weapon, uh, recently. And it looks like yeah. Iran has a cruise missile that is able to go up to altitude, quite high altitude, and loiter for yeah. some period of time and then come down on these drones which is something that the u.s at least doesn't have or doesn't claim they have and like yeah. you just said in hezbollah uh, uh, they have in lebanon from the frequent uh invasions and bombings of lebanon by israel uh they recovered and back engineered a anti-tank missile that stays low to the ground and then pops up and is guided by a second operator yeah. with a camera on it that will come down and get through the Iron Dome. So yeah. there's quite a uh, quite a powder keg going on here, and all this bombing of all of these regions in the neighborhood, plus the U.S. bringing this this pier in there instead of just letting the trucks through the Southern Rafa crossing yeah. like they should be doing, and bringing U.S. military into this into the region. Uh, this is really incredibly stupid, and it's like incredibly stupid. There's no benefit for anyone in this, and this is only no. going to escalate. And, it's going to you know, escalate out of control, Peter, because as uh, Mike Disclosure recently reposted on Twitter, that there's footage of appearing, uh, footage appearing to show Iranian ballistic missiles at, at at high altitude as they fly towards Israel. So not only are we dealing with a situation where we're getting drones coming into Israel. Mike, we've got ballistic missiles Bull coming in. Ballistic missiles as well. Correct. And the first wave of attack from Iran entering into Israel is going to be within the next 15 minutes. So at that point, um, this is when the party is going to get started. Um, and our President Biden is going to be an addressing the nation shortly. Um, this Son is going to, like Peter said, this is going to get very interesting very fast. Yeah, yeah, and 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, of course, this is all precipitated because Israel attacked Iran. Uh, and the consulates are the considered sovereign territory, their national soil. So a consulate of another country uh, in that country is considered a sovereign territory. Uh, so when you have a co Iranian consulate in Syria, that's considered Iranian territory, just as the U.S. consulates are considered and U.S. embassies are considered U.S. Yeah territory when they're in other countries. So this was a, a, by the book, this was a direct attack on Iran uh, that happened to be, I believe, right next to a Canadian embassy too, which fortunately they didn't blow up in the collateral damage. But uh, all of this is spiraling out of control. This is a retaliation. We have to be clear about that. But uh, yeah, I, do, I don't have any confidence in the current leadership of the U.S. government to control this. It seems like the war hawks all want to fan the flames of this. Yeah, and this is going to become a big problem. It may become a UFO hotspot because uh, it seems that fireworks and wars do bring these things out. Uh, right. And I think that if that's the case, showed, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that video that Mike showed shouldn't be overlooked because uh, it's also know, a very bad position. Is this is one of the. Reputable, yeah, go keep on going. Sorry, just, uh, I'm just dealing with live video feed here. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying that video that Mike showed is. I think really, really important because Al Jazeera is uh, one of the largest uh, video broadcasters in the world and the most credible and well-researched, and they do not hoax things. So if that's an Al Jazeera video, then that's some of the uh, the best provenance that we've got from uh, from a UFO there. So uh, I think that's a really important video they brought forward. Couldn't agree with you more, my friend. Tia, you have your hand up, my dear lady. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I agree with um, <clears throat> with everything that Peter is saying. Um, I do. I just I don't want um, the United States is very capable of defending itself, too. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm not soaking, you know, the war drums, but yeah. <clears throat> we are very capable of defending ourselves, too. And Iran is not innocent in this, and they haven't been for a long time. Well, I mean, Iran's been killing their people as well. So, part I of mean, the problem is, is we can defend ourselves. Yes, we can. But part of the issue is that we're dealing with a situation where there were 26, I believe it was 26 uh, barges that were released from their moorings of which I believe 20 of them or so were actually loaded with cargo that have been suddenly released and heading down the Ohio River. You know, is this an act of uh, just teens going and having fun, or is this an act of internal sabotage? What's going on within the United States? Is this something that's going on? It's an interesting piece that it all adds together because this predicated the actual situation that's going on in I uh, with I uh, Iran and Israel right now. What do you think, Mike? Right. Oh, I agree. Um, like like Peter pointed out correctly, this is rapidly escalating, and it looks like it's going to be escalating out of control. <clears throat> They're not handling it correctly, not on any side. They had more than enough time to deal with this appropriately and yeah. use diplomacy to negotiate. They yeah. failed to do that. And now uh, the update that I just got is that they're rushing President Biden back to the White House. I guess he's going to be making his address soon. From the studio, uh, also known as the Oval Office, but it's not the real Oval Office. But before we get there, there is some interesting things going on in the coast of Oregon. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. Let me bring this little video up here and go ahead and show it. This is an interesting science piece we love to cover here on Disclosure tonight. Let me go ahead and bring this up. Here we go. Let me get the video. All right, let's bring it across. This is a mass die-off of, of crustaceans going off of the coast of Oregon. As you can see, there are millions upon millions of shellfish that have died off suddenly now the only thing that can really take shellfish and kill them off to this to this extent is a hot is a sudden increase in acidification of the ocean and unfortunately that's what it looks like i've never seen such a mass die off of shellfish like this 
in the past. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, your thoughts, Neil, since you live in Oregon, my friend. Oh, my God. That is that's amazing. I mean, that's a lot of I don't even know what I'm looking at. What is that? Mussels? Or something? Mussels, yeah. The kind wow, you can get at the grocery store a lot of times to go crazy. ahead and have with your pasta and everything else. And there's literally millions of them that have perished off the coast of Oregon. You know, you, you see you see footage of, uh, you know, a whole variety of different types of ocean life that'll, that'll do stuff like this. They'll die off in mass numbers. And it's like it's like everybody's taking their turn almost out there. Yeah, we had the issue going a couple of years ago with respect to starfish all dying and imploding and just melting away. We've had concerns mm -hmm. about issues going along with oysters that everybody loves to eat. But the thing is, no, this isn't chemicals or anything. This is a result of the acidification, potentially, of the ocean. That means all the carbon dioxide that's being generated on the planet is getting pulled into the oceans. It raises up the acid levels with in the ocean itself which these delicate uh, uh, these delicate life forms in the oceans can survive that's crazy what about the microplastics do you think that plays into it at all Pota uh, no not at all this is no. micro seeing so many things die at a certain time there's something going on not potentially the raising of the ocean temperature which we know is going on but this is something possibly to deal with acidification because that's the only thing that could cause so many things to die off peter go ahead right. uh yeah that's that's a, i think that's a good a good bet with the acidification that's entirely possible and uh you know a lot of the pharmaceuticals that you'll buy will have a buffered solution, right? And that's to make sure that it doesn't turn too much acid or too much base. It keeps it in kind of a range, like a buffered aspirin. Um, and CO2 is one of those things that is part of that buffer is sodium bicarbonate. Uh, so that's, of course, has CO2 in there. So when you pump enough CO2 in the atmosphere and it gets worked into the oceans, uh, that can acidify the oceans really fast, especially when you have a rise in temperature. And those two things might have done just what you said, ocean acidification. Yeah. And uh, that could be what we're looking at. But yeah, I hope, uh, you know, it with, might get some more news about uh, this ongoing situation. Um, and just say, I hope that uh, whoever's in charge of putting the Adderall and Joe Biden's ice cream cone did their job today. I, I would agree with you so much, my friend. Now, just to go ahead and say yes, a lot of the information out there can be propaganda. To take into point, there is a video that was, there was a uh, Twitter post that was put out there saying, confirmed with photographic proofs, an F-16 fighter flown by Ukraine shot down by uh, the Russians in Belgrade region after attempting uh, to attack city of Belgrade. Plane is captured and will be studied for secrets. Oh no, don't believe it, my friends, because truth be told, this is a Ukra this is not a Ukrainian plane. The photo shows the F-16 from the Thai Air Force. The aircraft skittered off the taxiway, taxiway and crashed into a drainage ditch at Korea Air Force Base on June 24th, 2015 at 1 p.m. local time. Uh, the pilot ejected and was slightly hurt. So you can't always believe everything that you see on Twitter or things you see on the Internet. And the reason I actually captured this was to go ahead and bring it out and saying, yes, Paul DeMond, disinformation is absolutely real. Andy, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to say with this, uh, yeah, with this disinformation, um, Certainly, with the the image you've got up on the screen of this this F sixteen, um, had it been an actual shoot down, there would have been a lot less of that plane in existence. Now. Yes, exactly. So, so, something traveling at about four five hundred miles an hour through the air doesn't end up looking like that. You know, that no, not at that, all. That was a that was that was a a car crash of a plane crash. Yes, 
Absolutely. Now, if I can, I do have a video coming to us talking about some actual science fact. Let's go ahead and get this to it. Uh, bring this up. This is a video coming to us from our trusted media partner, Ben Davidson, over, over at Suspicious Observers, talking about we didn't have not one, but two solar events coming in, heading towards our planet. Let's see where Ben is going to take us on this one. Here we go. Good morning, folks. We've got several items to hit today. We've got space weather, including possible multiple Earth impacts coming soon. We'll look at the monthly temperature data and a cool story about the record gamma burst. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on the sun. There was another M-class solar flare, the second in about two days. It came from the incoming limb on the south this time. None of the Earth-facing plasma filaments destabilized, but you might recall a couple of them have the last few days. First, here's a quick peek at the impulsive flare came from that active region turning in now. Flaring is returning, and the biggest sunspots are still on the far side. But more importantly, we had two plasma filament eruptions to end the week. Here was the first one solid snap on the north, but we also had one go yesterday morning. It was largely a collapse event, but those often produce CMEs as well, and that was the case here. Both events are very minor, low-density eruptions, but NOAA forecasters say both have a chance to clip Earth with solar wind enhancements. If both hit over the next 36 hours as they expect, we do have a good chance of minor geomagnetic storm activity. We'll be watching that tonight and tomorrow. Let's go to the March temperature report starting in the United States. First, on the left we have the daily minimum temperature anomaly, how much the temperatures dropped at night. And on the right we have the maximum daily temperatures. Once again, we have the exemplification that the highest heat marks are actually about it not getting as cold at night on the left, while the only blue we see is on the right, where the highest daily highs weren't as high. That is 50 to 70 percent of modern climate change. Next, let's go to the global temperatures and first, here is the mostly red map they're showing to the world, qualitative, with a couple light blue spots only. But here's the numbers, the quantitative data, much less deep red, much more darker blue. Folks, they do this every single month as well. They whitewash the cold anomalies and overplay the heat. It's quite the lack of integrity there. Last but not least, very cool story hitting that brightest gamma ray burst ever, which happened in 2022. The James Webb spectroscopy shows no evidence of heavier elements, leaving astronomers somewhat baffled. They were able to confirm that it was a nova event triggering a gamma burst at the start of it, but their hope to finally witness heavy element production was amiss. The heavy element production in nova has still never actually been observed. Final call here. We are three days away from the Observer Lunch in Colorado Springs, Tuesday, April 16th. Only a couple spots left. Last chance to grab one of those here today. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. All right, right here, right yes, now. It's here 4 we go. 55. Yes, he all, always got to appreciate Dr. Ben Davidson, what he tries to bring forward the information. Yes, as humans continually try to blow themselves up, our son continues to try and blow <laughs> us up you know what i'm talking about andy uh sorry i was reading something on the <laughs> chat. you always do this to me mate don't you well you were on camera <laughs> was i i don't know why <laughs> you Somebody were else told, take me on camera you see me picking me nose oh that was my neighbor that was my neighbor the other day actually i was walking out you know my neighbor and i he's a you know, I've always had really good relations with people from Korea and everywhere around the world, but there's this new Korean son of a bitch who moved in next to me about a year, year and a half ago. Not the friendliest guy I'd, I'd ever, ever dealt with my friends. And uh, as we, he he's he's been causing the battle of the neighbors. The, oh, God, the battle of the roses, Andy. We'll call it that. You understand that one, I, I think. And that's what we're kind of dealing with here. So he just recently went out and went along the property line and just dug a ditch right along to make sure he knows where the property line is. I think he needs to go ahead and take a look at what's coming from the actual county because it's about five feet more his way, and he's not going to like the truth when we get there. Anyway, as we're walking down, we've got a great relationship between us. And as we're walking down the street, 
what do I see in the morning as he's looking out the window, his nose up his finger, just digging for gold. And I was like, Oh my God, great opportunity. So I took my finger like this, put up my nose and I went like this to him, waving to him. And he saw this and immediately took his finger out and looked away. (laughs) You gotta have some fun with it. You never know where it's going to take you, my friends. Yeah, Shelly, you gotta laugh at this. So yeah. Not sure how we got to that one, Peter. I think, not Peter, but uh, Andy. Yes. I I, I didn't do, I wasn't involved. I don't even know if this guy's North Korean or South Korean. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, I'm not sure he's not that bad. Yeah, I was digging for gold. Do I actually look like Dutch sense? Are you saying, are you saying that a, hello, 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 everyone. No, yes, I've been watching Dutch sense for the longest time. He is a phenomenal person. If you want to go ahead and watch some people battle against, uh, if you want to call it, uh, looking for P- uh, looking for the ability to forecast um, earthquakes, Dutch sense, YouTube above and by far, phenomenal person, my friend. All right, yes, th- this looks good for me. No, that's my neighbor. <laughs> Got to have fun with it. All right, where are we going to next? I, I, apparently, people love Dutch sense almost as much as I do. Let's get back into the news about something now. Okay, I saw this tweet come across my feed today. And not sure that many people know that if you see a tweet, right, that's in a foreign language, you can go ahead and click on it and right down in where you're clicking into it. I got to fix this eventually. It says translate post, right, Shelly? Let's go ahead and click into it. And it says UFO congressman goes to UFO was given a morning study session is not assumed that it's an alien vehicle for UAP problems in Japan, national security and aviation safety issues. Yes, if you don't train your pilots, it's going to be an issue, too. Information disclosure issues, meaning our government and our militaries are taking this information and they're not willing to go ahead and share it. Next one coming in, science and technology challenges, even in the United States and Japan. If they don't share the information with the people trying to figure this out, They're not going to be able to get anywhere. More importantly, I guess potentially there's human right issues. Could this be talking about? No, they couldn't be talking about people who could be possibly abducted. But I think they're actually getting there. This is the first time we've seen in a government discussion bringing up human right issues about UAPs or UFOs. And I like they're calling it UFOs because that's what we call it here in Disclosure Tonight because UAP, interesting word, we'll figure it out. Let's see. If you would like to give a UFO lecture, we will do our best to accommodate you. Peter Panda, you have your hand up, my friend. I just, I just think it's interesting how everyone seems to be framing this UFO issue. When governments are involved, it's either – an issue of flight safety, so either your planes are going to hit it, uh, or it's an issue of national security, can which I, maybe can these I pause are you things for one spying second, on you, right? I'd love to have an intelligent conversation with you on this one because you're bringing up flight safety. I think it's an issue of flight safety because the pilots are not being trained on how to deal with this situation. And if they don't have the proper training, how can they have proper safety, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's just... It's just it's just and that's part of what I'm saying too. Is it's just interesting. These are the two framings that we're allowed to have. It's either flight safety uh, in the air, and the pilot training is going to be part of that, um, or it's a national security issue, which means it's like surveillance or whatever. But there's no real kind of third option framing, which is you know what if they're not either of those things? What if it's not a national security issue, or it's not a flight safety issue? Uh, where is the office of anomalies who's just looking at really interesting things that happen to appear in the sky that we don't know what they are for the sake of bettering human knowledge? So where is the office of increasing human knowledge and understanding reality? It's like we have this, uh, this idea that we either have to shoot at it or push it out of the way. You know, if it's a flight safety, we've got to push it out of the way. And if it's a national security, we've got to shoot at it. But those are the two framings that we're allowed to have. We're not allowed to have a uh, like a discovering the nature of a further reality in the sky yeah. um, issue with a lot of these governmental departments. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. I have to thank. He's not in the back. Rick, call in, my friend. It would be great to hear your thoughts on what's going on in the Middle East, my friend. I know we're not talking about disclosure, but it's something that's relevant to all of us. I have to say, wow, we just got three Super Chats in a row. Our first one for tonight coming in from Laura Greeno. Holy cow. Thank you very much, Laura. I appreciate that. Where are my sound effects? Why aren't they playing? There we go. I can hear it now. I think the audience can hear it as well. Let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit. Laura Greeno, thank you very much. My, oh, shit. Get back. Oh. And I just saw everybody. Laura Greeno. Mike, appreciate your service as a police officer, as well as our armed forces are so grateful. Mike, you want to you want to reply on that one? Rick Doty's coming in. How about that? Yeah, I just let Rick in. That's why I didn't respond quickly. Yeah, yeah Rick's joining us. Yeah. yeah, I want to thank Laura Greeno. That was very kind of her, and we appreciate the support. And I appreciate the kind thoughts and the warm wishes. Yeah, Very nice. Very kind. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Lindsay is saying, just want to say thanks for everything you do, Thomas and the panel. I don't get to be here much often, but I'm always uh, Team Rewatch. Much love to you all. Much love if you watch uh, Dutch Sense as well. Love you much, Lindsay, as well. And Rick Doty, thank you very much for that $50 super chat. Rick, welcome to the show, my friend. Happy Saturday. It's an interesting Saturday, to say the least. It sure is. I just got back. Israel, not the population center. Not that. <laughs> You've been, off, uh, my, uh, Rick, you've been off. You've been off, if I can say it, working on a video yeah. about doc, uh, documenting the things that happened at Area 51. Yes, yes, I was out in uh, Nevada for uh, this past week. How many uh, there are? How many days? Nice. Eleven days out there. Wow, so, that's uh, a long time, uh, for that matter. Um, where are we going to be able to see this video when it finally comes out? Is this over on Gaia or someplace else? No, it's going to be released uh, through the you know regular production uh, company. I, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be Netflix. Oh wow! It's a documentary, uh, which will probably come out at the end of the year. We had to refilm, uh, reshoot a lot of scenes, and uh, we did that. And uh, you know, it's going to take some time to to edit it and everything. So I I, I would expect it uh, sometime around November, between November and December. Looking forward to it, my friend. Can't wait to go ahead and see a preview of that one, my God. I love watching your stuff over on Gaia and the, and the episodes you've been bringing up on the Doty Chronicles on YouTube. But the thing is, it's so wonderful to have you on here on a regular basis, and just people don't realize what an important asset you are to the disclosure community, and we are so humbled. Honestly, I'm humbled by your uh, presence here on this show. Thank you for being here. Well, you're a wonderful, you have a wonderful show. I, I really appreciate you having me. Uh, I, you know, I can talk freely on the show. There's so many great people you have uh, on this show, especially in the back here. I consider everyone a good friend and, uh, and I enjoy being on the show. I, I like your, I like your shirts, Thomas. They, 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 they you know, you really look uh, the Middle East. Who the shirts. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, I, I do get my flannel shirts at Costco. I'll admit it. Great, great, great fashion, cheap price, but oh my God, it's so warm. And at least up here in the Pacific Northwest, we get to wear flannel probably eight out of 12 months, if not nine out of 12 months at least. Well, it's a nice day in New Mexico. We are, uh, we, we're up in the mountains here, so we're, we're at 72 degrees today. So I, I, uh, I was traveling in a, uh, in a short sleeve shirt. Really, really wonderful. Nice. wonderful. And, uh, yeah. It's Vegas 58, was 90. <laughs> 90 degrees. Well, it's 58 degrees here and sunny. Thank God for that. You got to enjoy the weather. Now, back to the, if you want to call it the breaking news, would love to hear your insight on this. There's been, you know, there's an attack going against Israel at this point. Uh, first, there were drones that were being launched. Now they're saying cruise missiles that are being launched. Any thoughts on this from your, from your perspective? Yeah, yeah, just just uh, turned on the computer about 15 minutes ago and i saw the headlines that uh iran launched uh some drones towards I israel and uh so i i you know i i don't know anything other than what i heard but i i rest assured 
the Israeli air defense system is the best in the world. They'll uh, they'll they'll be able to counter those. And they, of course, Israel has the best air force in the me Middle East. And yeah. uh, I think Iran will be uh, sorry for doing this. Yeah. And hopefully we this doesn't get to a nuclear situation, which could easily get up to that point, which would change the whole spectrum of everything that's going on. Uh, that's right. Uh, you know, Israel has, well, we believe they have at least 400 nuclear weapons, tactical nuclear weapons. And uh, Iran has somewhere between 10 and 15. So uh, I think Iran would lose in the end. I, I don't think uh, Israel would, would launch those unless it was a, uh, uh, a do or die situation. So uh, let's hope, hope that that doesn't happen. That's all we can do, my friend. Mike, go ahead. I thought Mike was saying something. Maybe. Yeah, no, I, I, I was waiting for Rick to finish. No, what I wanted to say, Rick, is that you're right. But the problem is this seems to be escalating rapidly. And the strategy that Iran is using is they've launched already 500 kamikaze drones towards Israel. But the drones themselves are not a real threat. What they're designed to do is overwhelm the Iron Dome system, the missile defense system that Israel has. And they're also firing... Uh, cruise missiles at the same time, a coordinated attack, and ballistic missiles towards Israel. And it's coming out of Iran, Iraq, and Lebanon. So I think as good as Israel is, and as prepared as they are, I have a feeling that they're not going to walk out of this unscathed. It's too big of a plan of an attack coming out of Iran. Um, that's why President Biden is going to be addressing the nation shortly from the White House. This is going to escalate, and it could go anywhere at this point. But Thomas and I were talking about if you join the show, based on your experience in the Air Force, in the military, you understand, and this is going to be an air war, you understand how that works. So we were curious what your thoughts would be if this continues to escalate, Rick. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, the The Air Force uh, or the U.S. military has um, uh, one one carrier group there, uh, or oh, two of them in the area, uh, and I think they have something like I'm just reading about 56 aircraft. The United States Navy has available. The Air Force has 34. So, uh, worst comes to worst, the United States is going to jump in here and uh, assist in the iron drone or the uh, missile defense system that the Israelis have to shoot down some of these things. And I agree with you that a lot of these drones, I mean, many of them don't even have explosives on them. They just, uh, they just clutter up the uh, Israeli uh, radar system used with the iron drone. And uh, th then that just uh, causes Israelis to not know what to shoot at and what, what to shoot at and what not to shoot at. And I, I agree with you on that. But those uh, cruise missiles, are, they definitely have a, a uh, pretty uh, big warhead on, on them. Uh, that's an interesting. That's an interesting point, Rick. Where you're talking about potent, you're talking about they have a bunch of drones that are just basically going and throwing up there to go ahead and overwhelm the system that's there, and to go ahead and hopefully the, the iron iron dome that they have is going to shoot down all these empty packages to allow that there are cruise missiles to come in and actually do the, the, the dirty deed. Exactly. And I, I think the Israelis have uh, a backup system. In fact, they have two different backup systems that uh, I think they can detect uh, these, uh, uh, un, uh, uh, these drones that don't have any uh weapon systems on board so yeah let's just hope that they could do that but i agree with mike there's going to be some damage in israel uh the, of course the the iranians said they're only going to target uh israeli military uh locations but uh you know israel isn't a very big country and most of their bases are close to uh cities and so right uh, there's going to be some damage to the cities yeah Absolutely. Peter, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, you know, it, it's an interesting 
dynamic going on here. And Israel's been attacking Lebanon and specifically southern Lebanon for the last six months uh, and civilians, including uh, camera crews and reporters who have gotten uh, fatalities and amputations. And they're trying to draw Hezbollah into this war. And Hezbollah, interestingly enough, has been extremely measured and they haven't been sending uh, missiles into Israel just willy nilly. They've been uh, taking out the surveillance network, the radomes that are on the northern Israel, southern Lebanon border. And they've been taking those out with the back engineered anti tank missiles that I talked about earlier. So they've been selectively taking out the surveillance apparatus every time Israel kills a bunch of civilians, uh, Hezbollah takes out a military surveillance target and a military spy target. So uh, I know those haven't been repaired yet. I know they have had temporary towers like cherry pickers that they put up there because Hezbollah just took another one of those out uh, a few days ago. And I know those haven't been replaced. Uh, so a lot of the surveillance system, it seems like uh, they've been on a slow measured course for this. And of course, when Israel attacked uh, the Iranian consulate a few days ago and Iran made it clear that that would not go unanswered, uh, it seems like they're not just impulsively reacting here and uh, they're doing a very measured response. And when Israel invaded uh, Lebanon in 2006, they got rolled up and put away. They got their asses kicked uh, hard. And Israel does also not have a good ground military. But like Rick said, they've got a good air force. So this is going to be an air war. Uh, I completely agree with Rick on that. This is going to be an air force war, but there's no good avenue here for the U.S. getting involved in this. Uh, yeah. This only goes bad. And uh, what the U.S. needs to do, in my opinion, is calm down, say, yeah, you, Israel, attacked Iran. Iran is retaliating. Already you know, been engaged. Because if you don't do that, then this goes in a cycle up and up and up. And yeah. it doesn't stop going uh, up there. So someone needs to be the rational actor and end this with diplomacy uh, right. because this is not this is not going anywhere good. It's not going anywhere good. And just to go ahead and recap on what Mike had said earlier, that Biden was heading back to the White House. And yes, Biden has arrived at the White House and getting ready to go ahead and make a announcement to the American people regarding what's going on. And if we are, if you want to call it, uh, standing alongside of Israel, we're in a situation where that opens the U.S. to more attacks. Now, one of the things that's interesting, as I brought up earlier today, Mike, if you remember, there has been an there's been a situation where there has been 26 barges that were uh, spread, if you want to call it, simultaneously released in Ohio, heading down and hitting dams, hitting bridges, etc. Um, your thoughts on this, my friend, is do you think this could possibly be uh, a coordinated attack within the United States in addition to what's going on over in Israel? Well, I have a quick update um, before the president is going to address the nation. Representative Tim Burchett from Tennessee made an announcement that the United States will stand with Israel uh, on this matter. I have a feeling that he has inside information as to what the address might be that we're going to get from President Biden soon. Um, and yes, those barges that were mysteriously all coordinatedly let loose down the Ohio River um, could be a domestic uh, terrorism attack against us from within our own infrastructure. People who are sympathetic to the Palestinian cause and what's going on with the conflict in the Middle East. Yeah. Certainly seems that way, in my opinion. Which kind of went across with yesterday over in uh, D.C. when Biden was uh, was announcing some of his support for Israel. Uh, we had hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters and other activists who were clashing with New York Police Department uh, in Herald Square. Thank God you weren't a part of that anymore, Mike, because probably you would have been in the past. I would have been right in the heart of it. So thank God is right. Yeah, this is escalating. And like Peter had mentioned, the United States is uh, not one to be the voice of reason. Usually in conflicts like this, it usually tends to escalate exponentially. And um, we have a bad track record with that. 
So moving forward, as we approach this situation, as it's developing, um, yeah, I, I don't think it looks good. No, really it don't. doesn't. We had that situation going on in New York yesterday. Then this evening, we or last evening, we had this situation where 26 uh, barges were uh, with, I believe, six of them were unloaded. The rest of them were loaded that went and actually started going down, hitting bridges, hitting dams. Uh, do you think? The, do you think possibly that all of this could be tied together? It's possible, but right now there's no intelligence coming through that I'm aware of that we are at threat from within the continent of the United States at this time. Depends on how it escalates moving forward. This right. is all unfolding, you know, within the past few hours since right as we started the show, right. this began. So, um, because as know. we know, Mike, our southern border is doesn't have the best level of protection that should be necessary if you look at the level of protection we have for people coming into the united states over international flights and what's going over in mexico there is a complete variance in the level of due diligence that our government is putting forward right oh absolutely that's you're you're absolutely correct about that that's that's what we're facing right now and this is What's going on? It, it's a rapidly developing situation. There could be parties that have been in place because, look, it's not that Iran decided to launch right before we went live on the show. This is something they've been planning and preparing for for some time. It just happens that today was the day that they decided to operate and, and launch right. this military attack. But they've been preparing for it for some time. That's going to come out as we move forward on this as well. Unfortunately, it's a situation that's evolving. Granted, to go ahead and make sure we're going along with YouTube's level of moderation that goes on, this is all suspect. We're trying to figure out where it is. The actual answer could be a bit different, but we're just trying to report on it and bring the information to our people and to our viewers as it's going on. Andy W., you have your hand up, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm gonna throw in about this with these barges. Um now to to me it seems very random for that to be anything um like some sort of um terrorist attack. But the thing is um, if I, there I, was I, one barge I, I, that broke I, loose, Andy, that I, would be I, something you you would be potentially you know, say it was Go ahead. Can, can I can I just say, look, um, you know, hypothetically, could have been seen, somebody seen what happened with the, uh, the the bridge the other day that happened where the ship crashed into the bridge, which was awful. Um, I don't think that was right now. Any anything that was uh, that was just an unfortunate accident. Um, you know, it, it, I I do know there is a lot of um, you know. It, potential terrorism issues from internal in the US, um, lots of different factors. Um, I just find it exceedingly random why somebody would think, you know, releasing you know, 20 odd barges is going to do a massive amount of damage if there was something potentially explosive on there, maybe, you know. Um, are we dealing with well, high I, school I, I, kids I, I, who are going out and trying to go ahead and cause a little bit of calamity, or are we dealing with something that's a little bit more advanced and are, predicated? Is the question. Are, are, are we dealing with simply an industrial accident? You know, we we don't know how these things were moored up. Twenty six, you know, though, could, that could, is something that's highly suspect. Could, could have been somebody just like, we haven't dealt yeah, with oh, this oh, in the we'll past only, we'll, only, we'll only tie up two you know moorings break you know I, I, I'm not going anywhere near the, the terrorism aspect for this at well, the moment we just we, have we to look at we, all particular, particular aspects of this and say you know what there may be something more to this than what we actually I'm understand. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna downplay it at the moment. We don't know the information on it. Yeah. So at the moment, yeah, you know, it's, it's a wait and see. So yeah, you know, it's it's a little bit everybody's getting a little bit flustered. Oh, what if it's this? What if it's that? You know, we don't know. It, it could have been in the some sort of industrial we don't know how these things were moored up. It's, it could have been somebody who was just not like 
you know, doing their job properly. Yeah, well, I'll say if it was though. if it was uh, if it was the same intern that tied up all twenty six of these, I think he's going to get fired pretty soon. Probably, but you know, again, yeah. we we really don't know what what is actually happened with these. You know, I, I think you know, in, the, in what is it in the cold light of day? You know, we'll, we'll understand a bit better. This is this is you know breaking as much breaking news as in um, what's happening with Iran and you know Israel. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, don't hold your breath on this, on it being any, you know. We're not, we're but we see. just have to go ahead and bring it up and say, right before this happened, we had this other event that went on. After a couple of weeks ago, we had the other issue that went on with a uh, of a uh, particular very large cargo ship losing its power twice as they try to regain control of it, which we haven't heard anything from that. So it's still an interesting situation. Tia, yes. you have your hand up, my dear lady. The mute buttons on here. I do, and I'm going to like um comment down because I know that that we're we're on an international show, but this um America, this is my country, and I love my country and I love my people, and I want to be very careful about everything being America's fault and everything America, America, America. It is not all America's fault, and it is not all my people's fault, and I am tired of people trying to shove that shit down my throat. There are a lot of people at fault, but I love my country and I'm not just going to sit by and let everybody, you know, down and down every, you know, this country is open to many people. It is what you make of it. And it is okay when you are sitting somewhere else and you are not on the Ohio river or on the East coast where these things are happening. That's never happened before. Never. OK, we've never had a, a Russian ship just all of a sudden lose power and run into something either. Um, America is not. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't want to hear that no more. This is my country and it's open and we are loving people and we accept everybody. If you do not see what is going on, there were riots in New York City. They are my they're killing our cops. OK, we just had to bury two more young, young cops who are just trying to make it better here that weren't doing nothing wrong. I understand the war on um, innocence, but them cops were innocent, too. OK, and we're, it's like open season on our military structure, our cops. I don't like it. And I don't like that everybody's trying to say that overseas there's just some innocent people because they're not. This started a long time ago when they were all close up to Hitler and the Jews were being killed. We all forget about all of that when we're talking right yeah, now. Yeah, but when the Jews okay? start acting like Hitler, that's a problem, right, That is Peter? a problem. Yes, it is. But we, the, they're all acting like Hitler. So how the hell is it all America's fault? It's not. It's not, but we have to look at what's going on in the situation. I know, Peter, you've got using, a definite opposite and opinion And on you're this. putting them together. That's the problem, Thomas. We have to separate. We have to separate that because it is yeah. so. Yeah. They're using it as a manipulation tactic. I know, but we have to look at this on both sides of the coin. Peter, you have your hand Absolutely up, my friend. Absolutely, we do. Yeah, right. We have to be fair and measured and we've got to say, you know, what is people's fault and what isn't. And, you know, the United really? States, United States yeah, does have right. some issues here. That's right. Like they were they were the only country that vetoed the ceasefire in the United Nations Security Council. And they did it three well, different times. Well, their hostages aren't returned. Uh, I'm sorry, but if I was over there and they had my mother and my babies, I would not want you to just give up on my kids. We're this country. With that, that is what. What is that? We leave no man behind. Now everybody was up in arms when Biden did it to our people over there. But so we're gonna just say it's okay again? No. Right. Well, the, no, the hostage. Okay the, yeah. So the hostage you return. Peace, you give the innocent people back, and you deal with just the military. Just let Peter talk for a second. Tia. take a deep breath. Let Peter talk for a second. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, the, the hostage return was part of that. Uh, were part of those ceasefires. It was uh, a ceasefire to re release all hostages. All side releases all hostages, and there's a ceasefire, and that was vetoed. So 
that did give uh, give a lot of uh, kind of a bad will to the United States. So there is some of that, and we have to accept that the United States is not really managing a lot of this very well, um, and the current administration is not managing this very well. And we have to accept that there are issues on uh, the other side too, where you know the other side has another perspective of uh, where they believe that they have entitlements to do certain certain things and certain acts. Uh, but at some point, we have to say, well, you know, the United States is not in the best position to be a fair arbiter here because we've chosen uh, a definite side and we've been making an impediment to this peace process by vetoing um, any of these things going forward. Why are so you not saying taken, the other side, taken, the other side well, believes that they can kill all a certain religion, Peter? That's not a, just a, a little thing. Come on now. Let's be well, fair. We, Let's be fair well, I, with it, okay? Let's be fair with it. My last name, you can see it, Ibrahim Loriano, okay? So let's be fair when we say that this world has any room for all of us and not one religion has the right to kill off a whole sector of people. You do not have a right to take God's children out of this earth if you're going to be screaming that it's, it's in God's name. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I can, and it goes for both sides. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you, and that goes for both sides. I absolutely agree with you with that. Uh, we've got a lot of problems with uh, people acting and what they think is religious justification for both sides, and it shouldn't be. But the problem is that we've taken diplomacy off the table by vetoing all of the diplomatic solutions. And so that's really the problem is we need to stop uh, interfering with diplomacy because these things do not end uh, on the battlefield. They never do. Just like Ukraine is not going to end on the battlefield. That's going to end in negotiations. Uh, they're not going to bomb their way to peace. It never happens that way. Uh, right. Not in the modern times. So we need You're to right. negotiate this and not uh, not do things that are going to fan the flames and add other countries to this and widen these wars, we need to be looking at shrinking these wars and calming this stuff down because this is not going well. And then I'll shut my mouth and I won't say anything again. Trying to minimize Americans though, like with all the propaganda going on where, you know, Americans are being beat to a pulp and it's easy to take Americans down. It's not true. These, you know, it's not true. It is stoking these people to think that they're just going to be able to run in through America. It's not going to happen that way. American people are going to stand up and fight. And this, this propaganda separation of, of races, it's not going to work because it's already, it's already backfiring. And America's going to fight Americans, the, the, the civilians. We have never not fought for each other you know we're going to fight if they if they start with taking down like we this is our country we know it best take the bridges out take the bridges out you'll they'll never come through most neighborhoods it just they they just won't be able to so i think if they are watching and they are around and they're listening to this chat remember that americans are strong and and we we will stand up for each other no matter how many times people try to say that we're this evil entity, we're not. We're not. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we're going to get domestically invaded, honestly. And you know, I I don't understand why all these countries put their countries right next to our fifth fleet in the Middle East. I mean, that seems like very adversarial things for them to do. But uh, you know, around here, I don't think that we're in much danger of getting attacked here. I think that. Uh, we're really looking out for certain classes of people who are involved with oil and military industrial complex weapon sales. And we're getting into these wars for reasons that don't protect uh, Americans in America. Uh, if anything, they just they threaten the uh, peace of people around the world because we're after certain people's interests in going into all these wars that really yeah. have nothing to do with the United States people um, to but begin with, the their that are corporate interests. For it. And they're, the innocents are being killed for it. It's an ideological war and it's absolutely insane. And America, but America is- an ideological war. We're dealing with something where an attack was 
put forth against Iran, and now there's a retaliation. So this gets beyond an ideological situation, Tia. You just have to be so? realistic on That's it. That's what started it. Ideological is what started it. All of it. All all of it started over who's God <sighs> right, they, they, they you, think is better. You, Mike, go ahead. Thomas, do me a favor. Can you go to your uh, Twitter account, the DM? I just sent you a YouTube link. Can you click it up live on the show? It's CCTV from the Middle East. We could see in real time covering a lot of Israel. And right now it's been announced that there are ballistic missiles fired from Iran inbound to Israel. We've, so we've we already covered this. that, my friend. No, they're inbound to Israel. They're going to hit any we, minute now. I know. We're waiting for that to happen. I, well, I've got, I've got the link from you, but there's no video coverage or anything. It's just from OSINTDefender.com saying the spokesman uh, pours, uh, spokesman for the Israeli Defense Force, Rear Admiral uh, Daniel Hagari, has confirmed that an, uh, Iran has launched an attack against Israel consisting of so far of dozens of one-way suicide drones currently passing through Iraq. He states that it will take hours the drones to is uh, to reach Israel and their GPS jamming and other measures from the United States as well as other allied countries are already in place as a result of their interception. Uh, check your uh, DM now. I sent you another one. No, the last one it. I have is from two hours ago. No, I just sent it now. Nine seconds it says ago. live CCTV coverage of the Israel and the Middle East. There we go. You got it? I got it. Good. Perfect. We need this. Put this up live. Um, we're going to be watching in incoming right now in real time. Wait, I lost it. I resized the fucking video. Oh, the... Uh, bring this up again. It's wow. Twitter is just acting. None of my incoming messages, Mike, are showing. I know at this it's, point. It's, it's 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 it, everything is slowing down. Not just that, Twitter is actually literally blocking your incoming messages. I have no idea why, but I want to. Uh, I want to thank Laura Greeno again for the 1999 super chat. I appreciate the support for the show and for the work that's being done. And you didn't have to do that, Laura. You already sent in a super chat, but we really appreciate it. And it's um, it's something that makes a difference. So we've got multiple video feeds going on here, coming from. It looks like coming from. Uh, um, Israel. Nothing yeah, showing it, anything. We got stuff coming from Israel, coming from Tehran, Damascus, North Israel. Um, be interesting to see where this goes. Because it's been confirmed that there have been ballistic missile launches out of Iran that are due to be inbound in Israel as we speak. So we need to cover this. We're we'll waiting be for it because time. you said it was about 15 minutes out when this is was was going to go on. No, that was that was the drones. This is a new announcement. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to escalate. If they're utilizing ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and they're using the drone swarms to confuse the uh, missile defense, yeah, this is not going to be one and done. I can tell you that already. It's already escalating, Mike. Let's be honest. When do we hear, when do we know, uh, is there any thoughts on when uh, uh, bumbling Biden is going to come forward and talk to the American people? I think they're trying to shoot him up full of enough Adderall so he can stand in, live in front of the camera. <laughs> Peter, do you have an opinion on that? You, you, you're the expert. Uh, yeah, as, as far as I can tell, I believe that his ice cream cones are what's being laced with Adderall, but that's just a guess. You know, don't, don't. Don't take that too too seriously. But I yeah. think that's how they're feeding it to him. You know, uh, we thought seems... you know we thought we were beyond the bumbling idiots in the White House when we had George G W Bush in office. But the reality is, we probably have one of the biggest ones in office right now, right, Peter? 
Well, it's hard to choose. I mean, we're spoiled for choice in the United States with these people. We really are. And there's there's like I, I'm convinced that the voting system in the United States and also probably in England, I think Andy can agree with this, is you vote for the person who you want to make sure that you don't work with in your job. So you figure, hey, that person's a real idiot. I'll send them to Washington so they don't show up in my job so I don't have to work with them every day. Yep. And then these people get to Washington and they're like, hey, everyone wanted me. No, everyone wanted you out of town. They wanted you out of their state and they sent you. They exiled you somewhere else because they didn't like you. So that's the reason you were chosen. And that's mostly what people vote for, I think, these days is they just they, it must be. Uh, but we're given, you know, choices that no one really wants anymore. And we choose the lesser of two evils or uh, the evils of two lessers, depending on how you want to look at it. And they're, they're not really people that we generally want. They're people that we choose will do the least harm, we think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got to figure out how it is that we've been constrained by a two-party system that's not in the Constitution. Uh, but we're allowing these two parties to take control. And, you know, in cases like these and in cases like these wars, uh, you know, the media helps out by not saying, you know, uh, by saying, oh, look, uh, someone's attacking someone, but they never say, OK, this is a response for a previous attack that the other person made. So as long as we keep framing this as, well, this is an attack, so we need to respond to this, it keeps going forever because next time uh, when the response happens, then we say, oh, well, that's an attack. So they need to respond to this. And it keeps going like this. It's always framed as an attack and it's never framed as a response. It's never framed as something that's even. And the whole system's never taken a look at. Uh, each side with their media frames this as an attack on them. And it's never put as, yes, well, this is a response to this previous attack, and that attack is a response to that previous attack. And unless you take this back to where this started, then it is just framed as this, well, we have to defend ourselves. Well, but we're the one who attacked last time. It's like, two people playing chess, right? Each one's making a move and neither one is necessarily 100% at fault there. But if you want to stop playing the game, then you have to just have a third party come in and say, we need to negotiate a stop for this game because each person is making one more move and this isn't going to end well until everyone loses huge numbers of pieces, which is what we get ourselves into now. It's an unfortunate situation to say the absolute least. Um, Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, now it's being reported that explosions are being heard over the city of Haifa in northwestern Israel. So it's those missiles are making contact. Rick, what are your thoughts about uh, ballistic missiles? that are going to be coming in how much damage in an average city would do you think that could uh, that could cause two uh two ways you uh you utilize ballistic missiles one an airburst which causes the most damage uh they they detonate them about 1100 feet above a of a target the the other one is ground uh burst which means it's not going to do a uh it's going to do damage, but only in a smaller area than an airburst will. And um, but one of the things where we uh, we got to think about here is Israelis launched a a uh, pre-attack a few days ago, which killed some uh, uh, Iranian uh, military commanders. Also, uh, an area just south of that location, there were. Uh, six scud old scud missiles that were being ready to be fired a preempted strike on uh, israel and uh, now people not, not only the people are reporting this uh the uk the sun's reporting it um the uh italians are reporting it uh, even the jordanians are reporting it and Jor jordan is is trying to stay neutral in this uh so uh, the reason Israel attacked in the first place uh, was a, uh, was to pre prevent those scuds from being launched. Um, so we got to we got to look at that. It's, the Israel Israeli uh, intelligence service has the best ground uh, collectors in the world. Uh, they have people, uh, men and women, 
uh, that can be disguised to go into an area to scout out the intelligence recon for uh, attacks. And that's what they're doing. And um, they, they're embedded in every country around there and the, even their enemies. And uh, if something is going to happen, they're going to report back. And then Israelis are always ready to uh, to attack first, uh, be on the um, aggressive side of it, to prevent the damage inside Israel. We got to remember that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Tia Yarvihana, yeah. my dear lady. Um, <clears throat> is there any possible way that um, Israel could be um, putting bombs off in Israel to make it look like Iran? Is it possible? I don't think they would do that. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, it's possible, probably, but I don't think they would do that. Just I, on I, this kind of a scale, and endangering their own citizens, I, I don't really think with what's been going on over there, they would do yeah. something like this. I'm talking about with the dome, like, um, I here, here's my thoughts. Um, to, to get, um, I don't know, maybe they were worried the world wasn't going to stand with them when this came. I'm just, I'm just wondering if it's a possibility. I don't know. Peter, your hand is up. You're next. And by the way, if we have a uh, video feed of Jerusalem, there are explosions being reported over the eastern side of Jerusalem right now as we speak. Go ahead, This Peter. is the video feed you gave us before, Mike. Is there a different video feed you want me to bring up? No, this is the one that had different parts of the area that we could see. Yeah. The other ones are isolated to one or the other. That's why I put this one up. But yeah. Go ahead, Peter. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that's probably the case like you got it from here, uh, because I think there. This was a announced retaliation, and that Iran made it clear that this retaliation was going to be coming. Uh, that they weren't just going to sit around and have their uh, consulate bombed, uh, which the United States would do the same thing if uh, if somebody if Iran bombed the United States consulate uh, and sent missiles in. The United States would not just sit around and not respond. Of course, we have to expect they're going to respond because the United States would respond too. So I think this probably is a genuine thing. But um, yeah, Israel has done some false flag things before. Um, they're pretty well known to have done that. Uh, they have, you know, shot a, a Al Jazeera reporter and then tried to blame the Palestinians for that, and even came up with a video. It was a fake video, and they also. Uh, sent a missile strike on a hospital earlier in Gaza, the first hospital they attacked, and there was a lot of world outrage. And then they tried to say that that was a uh, errant missile, uh, which it definitely wasn't because they don't have that capability uh, to do that kind of missile. They can't; they don't have nearly that payload. They can't displace that much concrete. It was uh, unquestionably, uh, you know, a U.S.-made um, Israeli launch missile. Uh, well, thank so you. I just wanted to ask. Flags. I told my daughter that I would definitely ask. She's listening right now in the chat so i wanted to make sure that i asked she may need oh yeah yeah well absolutely well i mean it's a good question really because uh militaries all over the place do that sort of thing uh they have a habit of doing that the u.s has certainly done that uh i think the philippines probably has done that in in their history uh there and uh it's possible that some ukraine and russia certainly uh both yeah. of those guys have done similar things where there's disputed uh, disputed uh, attributions for exactly who did what. So I think it's absolutely a good question to ask, but I don't think in this case uh, there's any evidence to say that that was uh, anything other than what it looks like here, which is um, Israel sent a missile into uh, the Iranian consulate and killed a bunch of Iranians, and Iran said that they were going Jerusalem to respond, for fear. and they're doing it. Well, thank you, Yasmin. Shout out, I love you. I asked. Okay. Interesting conversation to say the least. It looks like nothing is, is if you want to call it, showing up. The uh, missiles coming in, Mike, have happened yet. Uh, at least we're watching over on Fox News Live to see what's going on. There's still a lot of uh, rocket warnings sounded in southern Israel, meaning there is an impending attack. There are missiles coming in, um, and people are under the highest level of warning that could possibly be happening. Your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, check your DM. I just sent drone you attack. Video footage the drones over take Jerusalem. out. 
you can play this video clip for the audience. I think it'll show us what's going on right now. Let me double check. DMs from Mike. Sure is a post. All right. All right. All what you got going on here is, let me bring this up a little bit larger. Let me get this across to a different browser where I can show this and have audio coming in too. Give me a second here. Um, so we see se uh, several successful interceptions seen in the sky uh, in the eastern city, uh, in the eastern city of Jerusalem. So what we're seeing is, yes, there are some things getting taken down in the sky, but there are some things that are definitely getting down to ground level and causing explosions, Mike, basically saying that their Iron Dome, would, to go ahead and protect themselves, is not protecting them 100%, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The idea, like I mentioned to Rick earlier, behind the 500 swarm drone attack was to confuse the uh, Iron Dome missile defense system. That's what it's supposed to do. So the real targets, the ballistic missiles and the cruise missiles, can't be intercepted. That's the whole idea behind the waves that they're using in this air war against right. Israel. And that's what it's about, sending in a bunch of things that can disguise and go ahead and predicate their attack for what they're doing to allow those missiles to go ahead and knock down the craft that don't have uh payloads involved with it to go ahead and allow those bigger missiles to come in and actually take out the targets That's and exactly you have your hand right. my friend uh listen my, thomas check your dm i sent you a new live video foot All new right. feed <clears throat> yeah um can i just say as well what people need to remember you know iron dome is going to target these drones, these missiles, whatever is sent across, they do not destroy the object in its entirety. Okay, um, we 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 see this with what's happened over in Ukraine, you know, um, with with Russia firing um, weapons, missiles, drones at Ukraine. A lot of the damage is not the actual missile being hitting; it is actually the debris from those devices landing. Yep. Um, so just just uh, you know people remember that you know what, what you're seeing and uh, uh, um the any damage any explosions you see may not actually be caused by the the weaponry hitting the ground as it's intended this could be damage collateral where things are knocked out of the sky and then come to earth you know unfortunately what goes up must come down yep. whether it's intact or not so yeah yeah, Jcat, we know this is stressful, but this is things that are happening in real time. We're just trying to go ahead and cover this situation in live. Granted, knowing that some of the things we're we'll seeing may be old videos, but the reality is what we're seeing for a lot of this stuff, this is near live coverage of a situation that we hate to say is real. Set it for themselves. Right, Peter? Well, before Peter answers, I have a new update. Uh, it seems that there are initial reports of an attack on U.S. forces at Erbil International Airport in northern Iraq, as well as El Assad Air Base in western Iraq. So now uh, U.S. forces are under attack <clears throat> from Iran. So now this is officially escalated. Yeah. So, Rick, you have any comments on those air bases in Iraq? Anything to add to this conversation about how this is going to escalate now? We can definitely use the information or the inside. Uh, if, uh, if our info, uh, if our forces are under attack, obviously we're going to defend ourselves, and uh, we have a sufficient sufficient number of uh, uh, assets in the area, air assets and ground assets, to, uh, to 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 defend ourselves, defend those air bases, and then to retaliate. Um, uh, another thing I just wanted to say is uh, the Isra Israelis have a number of different air defense systems, not just the Iron Dome. Right. They also have the Aero, Aero uh, missile defense system, the Af uh, Rafael Aero, uh, air 
uh, aero, advanced defense systems. The aero systems will knock out anything that's been launched over 2,500 uh, kilometers away. So anything bigger than a small drone is going to be, um, uh, tr would trigger uh, the retaliation of the aero missile system, both aero two and aero three. And the Raphael a a advanced air this system, uh, they'll, that is a uh, broader uh, system. It'll launch little um, explosives into the air and anything that touches any one of those will be detonated in the air. And that's what they have over the cities to prevent the debris that, uh, uh, that um, Andy just talked about from hitting the ground. But uh, I'm sure our defense systems are ready, our, our military force units in the area are ready to retaliate uh, based on what uh, Michael just said. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. Your hand has been up. Uh, yeah, with, the, with those military bases in Iraq, you know, I think uh, we can recall that those were, uh, there were several attacks on uh, U.S. military bases in Iraq in the last six months. And the U.S. military has been asked to leave Iraq and uh, to fold up those bases uh, since this, uh, this whole uh, war started. Uh, and the U.S. has declined to do that. Uh, and so there were some attacks uh, on the uh, Iraqis, uh, which killed a lot of civilians, which both Israel and possibly the United States were involved with, uh, which precipitated some of this. And if we recall, the military base in North Jordan that was a forward supply base to the secret military bases that definitely don't exist in Syria uh, that was supplying those after Hillary Clinton staged her coup there and failed to actually have that happen uh, <laughs> when she was Secretary of State uh, yeah. under Barack Obama administration. Uh, there were three reservists who were killed there from a drone attack, unfortunately. Uh, and after that happened, uh, there was some negotiation where Iran and these other groups uh, were asked to uh, basically put those put those attacks down uh, because there were uh, U.S. servicemen getting killed now. So they did that and they agreed to do that and they negotiated that with Iran, who does not control these groups, by the way. They're not proxies for the most part. Iran does have some proxies, but not all of these groups are under the thumb of Iran. They're fairly independent like a lot of nations uh, are aligned with the United States. It doesn't mean the United States controls them fully. But after this uh, attack on the Iranian consulate, that deal was null and void. So, and that was stated. That was stated that they were no longer going to uh, abide by this, uh, this essentially, I won't call it a ceasefire, but this, uh, uh, well, effectively, it was a kind of a ceasefire. So uh, that attack from Israel had the effect of uh, reactivating uh, these attacks. And I think there have been 166 or more attacks on U.S. military bases since this, uh, this Israeli war started. Uh, so th this is quite a long string of those. Uh, the best way to do that, of course, would be not to have the military bases there in the first place, uh, since seeing putting U.S. military bases in Syria in Jordan and Iraq, and Iraq um, exposes them to countries that don't have long range weapons that wouldn't be able to reach the United States personnel in the first place. Um, so we do have to look at you know what the practicality of this is here. Uh, but as far as the Iron Dome goes, like Rick said, there are, there are other things aside from just the missile interceptors. There's also um, laser directed energy do weapons uh, as part of that Iron Dome, which are um, under development and possibly are developed. Uh, it's not clear how far along the line they are, uh, but there's a there's a laser defense system. Uh, there are a few other systems, and mostly these iron domes have been taking out uh, rockets, uh, which are like uh, you know like the the Hamas, uh, the Al Qassam brigades have uh, rockets that are non guided. They're just they literally have a fuse. Uh, you light the fuse and you kind of walk away and they go on a parabolic arc and they're very low yield. They're not guided. They're nothing special. Um, Iran has a whole new class of things. Uh, 
as far as what is in Gaza that these brigades have been using, they've been manufacturing their own uh, weapons. Like they have RPGs, which are a, a, a remanufactured version of an old Soviet weapon. And uh, they have, uh, the Israeli tanks have their modern tanks. They have reactive armor. They have radar systems called a trophy system, where if you're within a certain range, then this radar detects it and sends out uh, uh, explosive uh, charges essentially to detonate anything incoming. But they figured out that uh, they can manufacture a double warhead device. It's called a Yassim uh, 105. They also have a Yassim 80 that goes in and the first charge detonates the reactive armor and the second charge uh, goes in through the tank. And they've, man they've managed to lay waste to a lot of uh, Israeli armor personnel carriers and uh, made a pretty good dent, I think, in uh, some of these very modern uh, tanks to the point that they at least need to get retreaded. Um, so they've damaged the tanks. Uh, now you're talking about uh, a country like Iran going up against Iran. Um, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. Uh, you not only have this thing going on in Gaza, uh, Israel has also sparked a war with Lebanon by uh, making routine attacks into Lebanon, uh, including on civilians and also on some uh, military supply area targets, uh, both. Uh, and now they're trying to open up a third front in Iran by sending missiles into the Iranian consulate. Uh, so this is a question of how much uh, weaponry does Darren Dome have, how much can it get reloaded, uh, and what really is Israel's plan here when they're attacking three different countries simultaneously for no reason, uh, because attacking Iran is not anything that gives them any benefit. Um, neither is attacking Lebanon. Uh, the only thing it does is it draws other countries into this war, makes this a larger regional conflict, and it gets them some allies that will help back them up. Uh, and if indeed that is what's happening and the United States is getting drawn into this uh, quite deliberately um, by these ratcheting up attacks, uh, I would say my advice to Joe Biden would be one, uh, don't drip any of your ice cream cone on your shoes because that's hard to clean. But aside from that advice would be, uh, if this is a tit for tat, you let it be a tit for tat and you walk away from this. Iran had their consulate deliberately attacked, deliberately killed Iranians. Uh, that's a direct attack on Iran. If Iran responds to that and this is it, then you walk away from this. You don't drag the United States into a large regional conflict with Iran because that is not a pushover country. Uh, it is not going to go the way that a lot of people think. And uh, Iran is twice the size of Afghanistan uh, in area, and they are significantly better equipped than the Taliban ever were on their first day. And the United States did not have a positive result in Afghanistan. Uh, the United States did not have a positive result in Iraq. It managed to initiate Al Qaeda, and Al Qaeda grew from that, and that was an unforeseen blowback consequence. Uh, I won't say unforeseen. I will say they failed to predict the obvious. So this is not this is not good. In the United States jumping into this, if this is just one response to an activity that Israel started deliberately with Iran, uh, and Iran did not attack Israel, that's that's not something that we should be dragging the entire United States military into a hot war in this region. If this is just a one for one retaliation, uh, that this is not going to go well and. They need to put this back in the box before this whole thing explodes. That's my opinion. If Joe Biden's listening, wipe your mouth, get the I have vanilla ice cream off of it or whatever, and uh, calm, calm this down would be my advice. I would hope so. I would certainly hope so, because the last thing we need to do is escalate this to a level of where it's headed at this point. Uh, Rick, your thoughts? Um. I don't necessarily agree everything that was just said, but yeah. um, one hundred percent of all uh, weapons and explosives used by Hamas is supplied by Iran. 
Um, they do make their own uh, rockets, which just has a fuse on it, has a very short range uh, that Michael uh, talked about. But um, uh, Iran has fused, uh, fumed the war uh, into Gaza, uh, 100%. Um, the, uh, something that hasn't been mentioned, there's a rumor, and it's just a rumor, I don't know anything more than facts, that the uh, U.S. Special Forces that went into Gaza, uh, and this is, comes through our, our system, our uh, expatriate system, uh, these U.S. Special Forces went in there and captured uh, a number of Iranian Special Forces personnel that were in Gaza. That was the only ones that reported that was Israeli newspaper and Israeli, Israeli's news. And we don't know what happened to those special Iranian Special Forces uh, personnel, but Iran is behind Hamas. Um, Hezbollah in Lebanon is a Shiite Muslim uh, system, and they have been fighting a war with uh, Israel for for years. Uh, remember, uh, from from eighty five up to about two thousand, Israel c controlled southern Lebanon. They 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 had forces and bases inside. Uh, southern Lebanon, they keep Hezbollah from that area. And through negotiations, uh, those troops, the, uh, Israel moved out, but established a buffer zone, which was allowed by the United Nations and uh, negotiations. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they are allowed in that buffer zone. Israel, is a, by treaty, is allowed within that buffer zone. Now, now whether you want to believe that they stay in that buffer zone, I don't. I don't know. I can't say that. I'm sure that there's special Israeli special forces troops that move deeper inside Hezbollah territory um, and work work behind the line. I would if I was Israel. I mean, you got to protect your country. And so um, there's always two sides of this. And as I said, I think Israel. I don't necessarily support what they did and 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 how they did it, but. If they if they knew of a uh, attack against uh, uh, Israel coming from that particular location where they bombed, uh, uh, I think any one of us that were there would have probably retaliated. And I think that's yeah. what the Israelis yeah. did. I think they went above and beyond, but they at least they retaliated and knocked out what they his were Delaware going trip before. short and is back in Washington monitoring. Yeah, I, I understand you completely, Rick. Sorry about that audio clip. I was just going to go ahead and get Fox News up to date. Uh, Peter, you have your hand up, my friend. Um, yeah, I was just going to kind of mention a couple points. Should that the Rick, Rick said there. Uh, so I think uh, the Iran, I think the U.S. government is fairly confident. I think they listed it as high, high confidence that Iran did not know anything about uh, the October 7th attack or any of the Hamas planning there. Uh, I think that the uh, the money came from Qatar for um, for Hamas routinely in the last 16 years. And keep in mind, uh, Hamas was uh, one one election uh, after Israel withdrew from Gaza. Uh, there was one election that was offered to the people in Gaza some 16 years ago. They voted for. Uh, Hamas, because Hamas was the anti-corruption party. Uh, the uh, the other party, like the Palestinian Authority, uh, is highly corrupt, and so they were vote they were voted and framed as a moderate party, and then they just didn't have elections after that. Uh, and Benjamin Netanyahu has been consistently fueling Hamas with money, and we know this because our Wiki WikiLeaks cables. Um, we also know that we have recorded speeches from Netanyahu uh, defending uh, supplying Hamas with money and bringing money into Hamas. Uh, he's on record, he's on tape saying this uh, and defending these actions. And he said that that's the best way to prevent the two state solution from working is if you keep a divided uh, government between Gaza and the West Bank so that there can't be one governing body that would join. So I think I think Qatar uh, you know, has been As supplying them to, is saying uh, So there's there's a lot of different places where Hamas gets resources from, but their their weaponry, their RPGs, uh, 
their chinois, their uh, devices that they uh, put on tanks by hand uh, and run and run off that they deliver by hand, their shape charges and their RPGs and their thermobaric. Um, those are all made by lathes. Those are all hand turned by lathes and they're, uh, they're reproduced from old Soviet, uh, Soviet weapons. They're uh, double charge uh, devices. So they're, um, there's, some, there's some question about how involved Iran really is with that, but there is definitely an axis of resistance as the US calls it uh, in the region that is resisting some of these uh, some of these other uh, people who aren't native to the region moving in and taking power and there's an axis of resistance to, to that. So it's uh, there's definitely a regional idea there. But just like you said, Rick, uh, there, there's a lot of different warring factions uh, in this and uh, the Shiites and the Sunnis do not always get along. They're more interested in warring with each other if you give them an opportunity than warring with anybody else. And there are a lot of different flavors of these countries and this idealism. And it's, it's a complex, uh, complex situation. But I think uh, definitely one thing that we can hopefully all agree on is that we shouldn't be adding more fuel on top of all of this, because when situations get this complex, it's very difficult to predict how they're going to evolve. And the more energy we put into it, uh, the more dangerous this is going to get. And if we didn't like being in Afghanistan for 20 years, we definitely are not going to like what's going to be going on in a country that actually has oil uh, and in the Middle East region. So I think the best the best thing to do here is to just kind of uh, hope that we can press our uh, congressmen and our officials to uh, be the, the be the bigger people and not go in off of emotion. Um, and just try and look long term for the long term interest of the United States, not the long term interests of uh, certain power distributions and corporations outside of the United States. But um, start looking at maybe spending some of this money uh, inside the United States and uh, letting the region kind of take care of itself a little bit. Yeah. If we can, Rachel Osborne, you have your hand up, my dear lady. I just had one question and I'll apologize in advance if it sounds sarcastic because I ask in earnest, why is it that when something pops off on some other part of the world, everyone always turns to the U.S. president to handle it and settle things down? I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on because what we spend a lot of money on a off. lot of our foreign defense and more importantly, a lot of uh, different countries where we do send a lot of money and arms to Israel. So a lot of people are looking to the United States to try and say, can we calm this down? And that's, I think, where everyone is kind of sitting from at this point. Okay, and thank you. That, I just didn't that, understand why everyone thought he had some kind of authority that no one else did i mean why not the you no. know the world doesn't have industry. faith in biden maybe in the united states government but not definitely in biden tia you have your hand up my dear lady um i'm gonna disagree with peter about um iran not helping train hamas i'm gonna strongly disagree with that just putting that out there they did they were they were caught they did they just weren't caught red-handed but they were caught mm -hmm. that's interesting. Right, thomas i i sent you uh dms again there's photographs of iran launching medium range ballistic missiles near the city of tabriz in northwestern iran and i also have video that you can play of iraqi uh capital so these Baghdad are the point having... where it, uh, images appearing appearing yes. to show let me go ahead and get this across a little bit more let me go ahead and just fix this from this side uh shrink it down this width there we go images appearing appearing to show medium range medium range ballistic missiles launched by the islamic revolutionary guard corps in near the city of tabriz in northwestern iran is that what you're talking about mike correct also there's video footage of Iranian ballistic missiles flying over the capital city of Iraq and Baghdad that you can play the video clip. And while you're doing that, I could tell you that um, 
there has also been thousands that are protesting within Tel Aviv to have Netanyahu step down. There seems to be an Israeli civil war brewing from within the country. And oh, there wow. are there are it seems like explosions are being heard over Tehran in Iran. So it seems like uh, Israel has already been uh, launching a counterattack. Which, you know, that's not going to be anything good, to say the least. It's no, just it going to take the situation and just escalate it beyond where it is right now. It goes from a retaliation for a specific attack, just like when we took out a leader of the Islamic uh, Revolutionary Guard coming from Israel in the, I mean, from uh, Iran in the past, when they put another attack on a military base in uh, Iraq at that point in time. This is going to sounds like it's going to be a tit for tat, one thing escalating to the other, and doesn't look like there's anything to slow it down. Uh, Peter, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think I think Mike Mike makes a good point with the uh, internal disruption in Israel right now. I know, uh, I believe Netanyahu is under four criminal indictments at the moment, and the moment he leaves office, he's probably going to be in prison. Uh, and there's there's widespread dissent against Netanyahu uh, because he tried to shut down the judiciary and essentially uh, kind of turn that into a little bit of a dictatorship for himself. Uh, but there, there, most of the protests there uh, have been sparked by the hostage families because Netanyahu is not making any reasonable effort to get the hostages out. So the hostage families have been staging multiple protests. They've been... Uh, disrupting their uh, parliament sessions. They had one session where they were throwing yellow paint against the glass uh, to try to raise some attention. And they were told that if they make, uh, if any individual families make too much attention, that their their hostage member is going to get moved down the list of priorities, uh, was what one of the hostage, uh, a family member of one of the hostages uh, said in an interview recently, which I found was kind of interesting. So it definitely seems like there is a uh, foot uh, repressing a lot of these, uh, the people that are trying to prioritize the hostages. Uh, and there's another group that doesn't really care about the hostages and just wants to persecute this, uh, this action to its fullest. And there is a lot of dissent and there are a lot of people in the streets uh, there are a lot of people very unhappy about this. They're getting sprayed with fire hoses. They're getting sprayed with a chemical called skunk, um, which is something that kind of sticks to people's clothing and causes breathing issues. Well, if we're talking uh, about so, skunk, we have to alert Matt Laszlo. This could be a type of weed that he could be interested in. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a little, a little worse, a little worse than that one. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, Mike, Mike's right. There's a lot of uh, internal uh, strife in Israel also now. Uh, and this is, yeah, who, who knows how these latest attacks are going to increase that. But uh, there were a lot of people in the northern territories that had to move south after Israel started attacking Lebanon and uh, Hezbollah and Lebanon started responding. Um, and keep in mind, Hezbollah was only there in the first place because uh, Israel exiled a bunch of uh, Palestinians from Gaza that were a militant front. And then they formed Hezbollah, uh, which is how that uh how that formed in the first place so mm -hmm. these are what i'm talking about where you have these one actions and then down the line you have another effect uh so why do we have hezbollah we have hezbollah because that was an israeli action that created hezbollah when they deported uh these people uh so you can't always figure out what the consequences are going to be for these actions uh and sometimes it's better not to take them so things don't escalate uh, and, you know, I don't know what's going to happen uh, with these things, but neither do the people who are running these countries. Um, so sometimes less is more. And the audience wants to thank Thomas right now for enabling the disclosure tonight. Second eclipse, because he showed us the full moon just now as he was bending down to pick up um, Mocha. Thank so, you for bringing that up, Mike. I appreciate that. <laughs> the audience appreciates it as you well, son Thomas. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> a full eclipse of my ass, for that matter. <laughs> Apparently, well, yes, I can feel that my T-shirt is not kicked in. No, it has not. <sighs>
as I try to go ahead and pick up the dog to make people happy in the situation, screwing up my neck along the way. What a great show, Mike. What a great opportunity to hang out with our friends like Mocha here. Yes, it, it is. And with the breaking news that's still ongoing and escalating as we speak, unfortunately. Yeah. Now I have to go ahead and clip that out of the clip and it's going to screw up the chat for this one. But you got to have to enjoy the conversation we've had along the way. Mike, is there anything we haven't covered yet tonight? I think we've covered all of the breaking news regarding the uh, possible beginning of World War III. So I think we've done our job. Let's hopefully say that's not where it's going to go on that. <laughs> that, that mode. Yes, Full Moon Thomas. Yes, let's go ahead and click that down, click off the auto, auto chat. And I want to go ahead and thank everybody for coming out to this episode of Disclosure tonight. More importantly, I want to thank the people who gave us some super chats tonight. Who am I talking about? I want to thank Laura Greeno, Lindsay. Rick Doty, of course, who's been in the back chat with that wonderful super $50 super chat. Faze Will, Laura Greeno again, Anonymous Rex, Faze Will, and of course, Badger, started for Thomas OnlyFans. No OnlyFans, my here, my friend. We're not, we'll leave it off to the side, my friends. <laughs> Thank you, you, Mike, for that reminder. Back. Of what I did to go ahead and lift up the dog, which was heavier than shit. She's like 55 pounds at this point, maybe 52 pounds, but still. You also forgot to thank Timmy Sino, Anonymous Rex, who sent us a super chat earlier. I sent that up as well, Anonymous Rex. Okay. There, there we go. go, my friend. Also want to thank everybody for coming out to this episode of Disclosure tonight. I want to thank everyone in the audience. I want to thank everyone in the back. What a great show. What a great opportunity to hang out with friends. And as we usually say at the end of every episode of Disclosure tonight, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. We'll catch you on the flip side. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.